the A race of the men's 5,000, if not the B races. Yeah, we are, and we've got you know, the first of our races coming up on our uh, live stream now. That's going to be the women's uh, B race in the 5,000 metres. That goes off in five minutes. Uh, and again, you know, we've got 29 athletes. When you look back at the last few years of this meet, I think it's 2021, there was 60% running personal best. Last year, that went up to 68%. I think it was in the 90s of people that got season's best. So again, that's why people have travelled here. That's why there are stellar fields. And I think there'll be some quality athletes in this B race trying to sometimes prove a point. When I was looking down through the results and those that have run well here, obviously, if you run well, you get rewarded. I know that's something at uh, night, the 10,000 metre personal best that uh, Ben Pochi definitely does. If you win one of the lower races, you get an upgrade the next year, Tim. Absolutely right. That's the way it should be. I mean, it is uh, a distance to 5,000 metres that is user-friendly, isn't it? You know, just going back to the sort of mass participation, participation element of this, when you think about the uh, park run movement that has uh, spread around the world now, which is absolutely massive in the UK, uh, 5,000 metres is a distance that so many more people can get their heads around and, and contemplate taking part in. It's about three miles. Whereas 10K, six miles, is a long, long way. And 5,000 is a great introductory distance to that. I am actually really impressed, though, James, that so many people have chosen to not just do their local park run or a 5K in their local park somewhere, perhaps around Europe, but actually take on a track 5,000, which is tough. Yeah, you're right, Tim. And that's you know, the amount of heats we've had in this and the amounts of uh, people sometimes making their debuts over this distance as well. But there are so many more opportunities, and that's what this provides. Next week, the same in Vienna, uh, which is the next uh, on-track night's edition, just a week after. So, again, some athletes are going back-to-back. -back. There is enough time to recover. Um, but, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this first race of our uh, stream tonight. And I can see uh, Saskia Millard, the British athlete, on the outside. They're going to be uh, an important factor today, those athletes with pacer on their vest. Um, they've got a job to set the early pace. In this race, we're looking at around about uh, yeah the 1545. If the paces are there, they can keep an eye on the wave lights on the inside. So, for example, this first race, the, the wave lights are going to be, uh, I think, beamed at around about 1545, I think it is. And so they can give an eye on those lights. But I think the pace is having a, a physical body on the track, cutting out that wind. You can see it's still slightly breezy. Uh, but yeah, those uh, 29 athletes behind uh, are going to be following uh, Saskia in the early stages. And well, the fastest lady in this race, Hannah Stillman from the USA. She's an on-supported uh, athlete. So uh, again, I think, uh, I mean, you know well, Tim, the Milrose Games in the, the Armoury. She was at 10th place in 8.54. So she's got good 3,000 metre pedigree. She's run 15.30. So we're looking for, yeah, that clocking to be within the kind of 15.45, which is uh, around about uh, just over uh, five minutes per mile, about 76 seconds per lap and around about 3.09 per kilometre. Well, the job for the pacemakers with a pack this big is perhaps amplified a little bit. You know, pacemakers in Diamond League meetings and high-caliber track, re track reset gatherings where people are, are very familiar, uh, to, people are very familiar seeing, have a, a job to do, but they're very, very high-caliber. They're usually world-class runners themselves. And getting the, the splits right almost to the tenth of a second is, is pretty common, and it's expected of them. But here tonight, James, with such a big pack, behind the pacemakers, it's important that they do get around that 3.09 per kilometre tempo, at least for the first couple of kilometres. I hope the wind doesn't affect things. Yeah, and you can see the start lists are coming up on the screen, and obviously uh, the DNS stands for does not start. Uh, you often get that with athletes that uh, either they didn't make it because of travel, maybe they're uh, woken up not feeling the best, um, you know, or they've opted for a, a, you know another race in, in another venue. So yeah, there's a few which might be you know make a little bit less traffic in the early stages, uh, but it's still a very healthy field. You can see they're starting on the back straight, 12 and a half laps for the 5,000 meter distance, and they're expecting around about 5,000 uh, spectators watching today. Uh, there's loads of food outlets, there's loads of uh, media interest. Uh, we saw the local TV production, so this is going out uh, across France as well. And, and that's something that ON really wants to kind of build the kind of brand awareness, but also showing the support to, to the local Paris running community as well. And obviously just generally just you know, really supporting high quality, uh, but obviously running for all abilities as well, Tim. Absolutely. 
good to see the uh, so many people turning up. This is the uh, home track of the Athletic Club de Montesson. So it's well used and uh, many of the youngsters will be out there tonight get taking inspiration from these senior athletes who will provide some wonderful racing, I'm sure. James, there are obviously targets this evening in these elite races, and we've had a lot of races through the afternoon, which have not been elite races, but just a great vehicle with which, which athletes can progress to a better standard. But there are targets for these elite athletes, aren't there, which are World Championship qualifying standards. I mean, there's some serious stuff going on with the World Championships in Budapest in late orders coming down the tube at us. Yeah, we've probably got three races tonight where that's going to be something that we are going to be chasing. Go back to those wave lights uh, in the women's 5000 A race. We're looking at that 1457. So it's going to be the rouge lights, the red lights are going to be chased. For the men, it's 1307. That, I mean, that is testament to the way the sport has progressed, how quick people have got to run to make a world championship team. Uh, and then in the 1500, it's now 334.2. Um, and we've got athletes that have run inside that this year, athletes that are getting close to that. Um, and again, they're going to be chasing, uh, not obviously the wave lights, but uh, as we saw last night in uh, Paris in the stadium, just uh, a few miles from here, that sometimes people run away from those wave lights. And last night, those wave lights were world <laughs> records. Today, it could be a ticket to Budapest uh, in, uh, in later on in the summer. But uh, going back to this B race now, we're moments away from starting. You can see the pacer. They still start their watches. They still put their hand on their wrists, making sure that they uh, don't always trust the electronic timing in case it fails. Obviously, the, the wave lights are there as well. But, yeah, you can see Saskia on the very outside. And, uh, yeah, she's entrusted with the early pace. So anything around that kind of 75, 76 seconds per lap, uh, and that will kind of get the runners in a nice rhythm. And you can see originally it's scheduled for around about 28, 29 runners. There it seemed like there's, there's a few that have... Uh, obviously stepped away from the track so but you can see two lines it's called a waterfall start tim but yeah there can sometimes be a bit of chaos when they come together after that first hundred meters well let's hope there is no chaos i do sometimes feel that track races when there's more than uh, say 20 in them look almost like the start of a cross-country race as they get under starters orders so they're off first time. Looks like Ellie Twentyman's at a DNS. The uh, British athlete doesn't start, but a good uh, British contingent also in there. Got uh, Kirsty Walker, Amy Griffiths, uh, Rachel Franklin, and uh, Tessa McCormack, as well as uh, a very strong uh, set of French athletes that uh, take to the track. Remember, it's over 12 and a half laps, so uh, 3.1 miles. And it'd be interesting to see who the athlete that uh, settles in behind. Could be Leo Haji there, the uh, French athlete, 25 year old, on the inside in the black singlet, wearing 539. So uh, she's got a, a lifetime best of uh, 1548. And uh, national champion last year, Tim, in uh, 20, well, sorry, in 2021. So we're uh, looking to recapture that bit of form. But uh, going out behind the pacer and going with the pacer is so important in these early stages to make sure that we have a trainer and almost a single file of fast running behind. Well, no, that's exactly right. Good that these athletes can get a race in in early June in, in good weather, good conditions. It might be a little bit warm for some of them, but, you know, I always found 5,000, when we've already talked about how 5,000 is a tough old distance to get right because it's where the middle distance and long distance disciplines clash, really. They crash, and if you can get that crash, instead of it being a perfect storm, turn it into a symphony, then it's a lovely fitness to have. But I always found that your first... 5,000 or two or three 5,000 of the summer were a little bit hard to get into. They were almost like pipe opening races and then you warmed to the task. So I, my first race would always be, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds off my personal best and then you'd gradually home in on your best times as you got later in the summer and towards the major targets of the summer, the championships. Yeah, and also athletes are coming from different distances, as we said earlier. You know, when you go through some of the race on the, the road quite recently, there's been some high quality 5K road races. Some are coming from the 10K half marathon background. Some of it we saw in the European Cross Country Championships uh, in Turin before Christmas. But yeah, I mean, many of them, you know, are coming from uh, this being potentially their first 5,000 of the year going through. A couple of them have, have been on the track this year, but, you know, it could have been in a, a slightly lower key 5,000 meter race. Whereas this is tailored given the fact that there are five women's races every athlete in this race has been uh, tailored into this B race. And they, for some of them, have been within a stone's throw of that A race. But they're coming through. We're looking for anything under the 230 mark means that Saskia Millard 
a multiple British university medalist. Uh, she's uh, a very well supported athlete at uh, University of Birmingham and a quality athlete over multiple distances. So they've got a strong pacemaker, Tim. And again, it's so interesting to see how long pacemakers can go, obviously over 5,000. Anything over 2,000 is great. If they can get to 3,000, then that's uh, probably the desired distance, wouldn't you think? No, absolutely right. That would be a great job if you can get to 3,000. Gosh, that would be, uh, well, we're looking at 3.09 per kilometre, so that would be 9.27. That's uh, quite impressive running from the front. And she goes to 1,000 there, what, in about 3.06 and a half, 3.07. So really good pacemaking at the front end. Superb job so far. It is, and there you can see there's a break already. So it looks like uh, four athletes have gone with Millard, the pacemaker, and then there's a sort of a 30, 40 meter gap. So athletes have to make a decision quite early on. Obviously the pace up front and going down the, the kind of pacing sheets, there's probably, yeah, four or five athletes that are sub 15 minute runners. And then there's a whole pack within that 16 to kind of 16, 20 mark. And you can probably see that playing out on the track already. They've gone through that first kilometer. They were inside the 309 that we needed. 559 is the athlete, which is uh, Alice Quinner, the uh, French athlete. She's a strong athlete, sub 33 minute 10K runner. So that's probably why she's at the lead of that, that chase group. But uh, yeah, there's enough almost safety in numbers in that chase group at the moment. I'm surprised how quickly the uh, pack of, the small pack have eased away from the main pack, I have to say. Millard is the ideal pacemaker though. She's tall. And uh, therefore, when if there is any wind around, provides significantly more protection than a smaller body might do. And she's up to the task at the moment, looking really good. Yeah, that lead group's down to three now. So one athlete has uh, dropped off that lead group. And so the next split we get is the, the two kilometer split. So we're looking at anything inside the 620 mark. You can see those wave lights being chased. 1550 is the rouge lights. So at the moment, they, uh, the chase is behind. They haven't broken 16, many of those runners. So they're all running towards PBs. The lights on the front, we believe they've been set at 1530 pace. So that's even slightly faster than what we were anticipated at the beginning. So at the moment, everyone in this uh, lead group and chase group uh, are on pace for lifetime best. And that second one, the blue light at the back, or so I think it's white light, sorry, is at 16.10. So almost the whole field operating around the 16.10 and under Mark Tim. Well, that is, that is really good, really good strength in depth. And when you think this is a B race, now, we've got, uh, what, about five and a half minutes on the clock, and we're looking at 3.09 per kilometre, so 6.18 for 2K is the target. That's about 40 seconds away. If they can uh, hit that, and they did build a bit of a cushion with that first kilometre split. That first kilometre, about 3.07 I got it at, so they uh, can relax a little bit in this one, this lead pack, or they can push on and go well below the target time. Remember, 15.45 was the allotted yeah, target time, the pace. And if they can uh, keep churning out 3.07s, well, they'll clearly go 10 seconds inside that, maybe more. Yeah, that gap is opening, you know, almost every single stride at the moment. Millard's doing a great job. This is the uh, two kilometre split. So we're anticipating 6.18 if they're on the 15.45 pace, but they're way inside that. And the chase group behind, some athletes that we kind of expected to be in the lead group, now, Yaha is the uh, Algerian athlete. She's got a 15.45 personal best. And it's also a, a very handy steeplechaser as well. 9.48, 7.41 half marathon athlete. So uh, Elisa Pomero, the Italian athlete, again, on paper, I expected her to be in that lead group. So at the moment, three athletes have moved away. I think we've had a late addition, Tim, I think, to the start list as well. The athlete wearing, uh, I think it's uh, 7.08. So we will try and get an update on the uh, the name of the athlete because they've decided already to go past the pacemaker. With the pace being quick, you can see that uh, is 746 on the outside of that group as well. And uh, there's a big, big chase in this. Uh, now some uh, gaps being made from behind Tim. I think some of the early pace is already paying these, some of the uh, athletes. Yes, that, is, that gap is growing all the time, isn't it? I didn't get the 2K split, I must admit. I'm guilty of not spotting that. It was just over 6.10, Tim, so, yeah, so it was quick. Just over 6.10. Well, in that case, they are 
well inside the target tempo, James. That uh, athlete 708, by the way, I think we're now finding out it's Samia Hassan. But uh, yeah, yeah, she's, she's a running. very late addition. Yeah, very, very late. But I tell you what, she is on time at the moment in terms of running. So you can see going under those uh, marquees. So that, that uh, was kind of brought out by Night of the 10,000. So those marquees over on the track, they do offer protection from the wind as well, but also the noise in them with the crowd being that close to the barrier, Tim. The athlete talk about it at uh, Highgate, really driving the athletes on. And uh, in the latter stages, the noise and, and the atmosphere in at those marquees really, really builds. <laughs> Well, the atmosphere will continue to build. I always think that uh, night racing is provides one of the best environments for distance racing because the winds tend to drop and the darkness creates with the lights in the arena a very intimate feel. But look at this, Samir Hassan on her own by the looks of things. And is that a big acceleration that's gone in, James, because she is so low and I can't see anybody else near her. Yeah, that's a real increase in pace, or at least maintaining it. So the next split we get is the three kilometers. So when she comes down, she'll be seeing five laps to run. And obviously going through the marquee again, getting lots and lots of cheers. A great crowd. I think that's the uh, the mascot, looks like the hedgehog. Saskia Miller jogging in the background. Her job has been very well done, setting them on this way. So you can see the clock ticking over 9.10. So uh, when the athlete comes through here, it will signal, uh, yes, just over uh, a mile of running to go. So, uh, but uh, yeah, two kilometers. And there's the gap back and uh, the chase behind and whether they could do anything uh, at the moment. That's uh, Ava Clavier. So uh, she's got a 16-11 personal best. So she's running way inside that at the moment. And uh, Elisa Palmero, who I mentioned earlier there, running 5-3-5, the Italian 23-year-old, desperately trying to give chase. But at the moment, they're running on lifetime best. But uh, Hassan at the front, Tim, the speed she's gone through that opening three kilometers, she's way in front of those uh, wave lights at the moment. Well, I got her at about 9.14 at 3K. I mean, that is fabulous. When you think the target time was 9.27, she is running. What, about uh, four seconds quicker per kilometre than was scheduled? And if that is the case, then Hassan, well, just trying to look at her CV, her lifetime best I got is 16.20. Uh, and if that is correct, then she is on for something like a, a 40 or 50 second improvement on her lifetime best. It's quite astonishing. Yeah, she did that in Djibouti, though, didn't she? So that could be, uh, obviously, in fairly tougher conditions, you know, and... But, you know, she's definitely operating way inside that, almost a minute inside that. So uh, she's got through the four laps to go. That's always a psychological thing as uh, a 5,000 metre runner, seeing four laps to go, knowing you've got a mile left of uh, track running. That's something these athletes would do multiple, multiple times. But obviously, yeah, the gap behind and also looks like the wind's dying down. So as we said earlier, that if the wind does die down, the athletes will definitely uh, keep accelerating their performances. And Hassan at the moment is doing that. She goes down the back straight. Great crowds, Tim. And there's a great energy here tonight, isn't there? Well, there is, and it's lovely when the crowds are on the infield and on the outside as well. The athletes are sort of running through a tunnel of people for much of the time. Hassan, though, is, well, she's very compact. She's small and compact. I want to say the wind's almost missing her. She manages to avoid the wind almost. <laughs> she provides hardly any resistance to the wind. Looking really strong going through there with, what, I think three and a half laps to go. She ran a 73-second lap to the point where she's got four laps to go at the lap times are coming up let's see what she manages this time but she's running metronomically and uh, moving really really well and that gap is growing all the time between her and her pursuers james yes it is and at the moment it's a performance worthy of an a race because if she keeps us going she's going to be inside that uh, that 15 30 mark but uh, yeah, the gap is growing to the chases behind as you said a compact runner and uh, she bided her time early on in the first couple of kilometres, but then almost just had to go. I think she felt like the pace was just starting to drop slightly. And, uh, yeah, you can see now that the chase is behind. Looks like that uh, is one of the athletes going through 3-9. That is uh, Haji there, the French athlete. And running well, 5-3-8, that's Rachel Franklin. So uh, she was, uh, I think... Ran in the Commonwealth Games, sub-16 minutes for the first time at the British Miners Club. And did so much for uh, running in uh, the UK. 
But uh, yeah, Franklin at the moment running very well. The Commonwealth Games athlete are back in fifth place. But at the moment, I think uh, having gone through four kilometres, Tim, we're now into the last just over uh, just over two laps of running. But yeah, we're inside that pace for a sub 15:30 clock in. Well, when she came through the line and she comes through this time, there'll be two laps to go. The last time she came through, it's 73.8 per lap. She's running 73s. That fourth kilometre was a 3.06. And when you think that the kilometre target per kilometre was 3.09, you can see why she's smashing these splits that were predicted for this race. There we are. That's a 74.8. That's a slight indication that she's maybe a little bit tired there. That time appearing at the bottom of the screen, James. But uh, with just over a lap and a half to run, she's got the race one now it's between her and the clock. But she's going to run a massive personal best. She is, and it'd be interesting to see if she can find something in this uh, you know, last stages of the race. Sometimes runners just save a bit. That penultimate lap probably hurts a little bit more than uh, kicking home towards the finishing line. I think uh, the fact she's in a pair of on spikes, that's definitely going to help her in this uh, last 600 metres. And, the quality of running that she's doing right now, she's going to start lapping some runners. Uh, and when you look at the strength of the field as well, I don't think many of them would have thought that they'd be lapped. But I think that's the quality of Hassan's running right now. As I said, it's almost A race quality running in this women's B race. Well, it is, and you feel as though maybe she should have been the A race. We want to know. We want, Nobody can predict if an athlete turns up with super fitness compared to what they've done in the past. And, of course, they can, there can be a mismatch, and that's unfortunate. But, you know, she and the pursuers in second place, Aud Clavier from the Amiens Club is in second. In third place, Leila Haji is uh, from the Fontainebleau Club. She's back in third. They're all running on their own. It's tough. They go, she goes through the bell there, James, in about 14-12. Brilliant running. Brilliant running. She's going to be way inside that uh, that 15.30 time. So she's going to be more towards the 15.20. She's uh, rallying now. You can see she's picking up the arms and legs are definitely starting to move a bit faster. And she's gone through the 300 meter to go mark down the back straight. There'll be loads of noise on the back straight. There's loads of fans, loads of spectators. What the great thing about this meet is they're on the inside and the outside. It often meets, it's just the outside, but the energy is always around you, everywhere on the track. And you can see she's got that last 200 meters team. She's three miles in and she's heading towards a massive lifetime best. 1620 wouldn't have got her in the A race originally, but the time she's going to lock, knock out now would definitely get her in the A race next year. Well, she'll challenge for a high position in the A race next year. This is brilliant. And she has been able to pick it up, James, this last lap. You know, that is always tough, too, especially when you know you've got the race won. It is. It's a super hard thing to do. But I tell you what, she's done it to absolute perfection. Samia Hassan, she's going to hit the clock. Look at that. Just over the 15-21 mark. That is a massive lifetime best. We make it a 59-second lifetime best on the track. She gets held up with the uh, the winner's sign. And I tell you what, she's going to be holding on to that. She's going to be absolutely delighted with that. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what position that gets her in the A race later on as athletes now streaming down towards the home straight, looking for some big lifetime bests as well. So uh, there's uh, some quality running from uh, all of the runners here, Tim. Well, Lord Clavier that has come second there, and she's run around 15.52. That is against her personal best of 16.11. 5.52, James. That is uh, Femke Rosbergen. She had a 16.09 personal best. She's run about 16.01. The times, are, I'll tell you what, the theme of this was fast 5,000. Fast and fun is something I read. And I'll tell you what, several of these athletes will think they've had fun with the scale of these personal bests. Yeah, Juliet Thomas, another one who's across the line. I think that was 15.51, uh, Sophia Benfairs as well. Also a lifetime best. Also, just given the nations, her debut over the line, we've had uh, Belgium, Netherlands, the UK, lots of quality French athletes, lots of UK athletes crossing the line in lifetime best as well. That's uh, Fathia uh, Sanchez as well. I think she's going to be outside her lifetime best. You can see on the screen the time's coming up. As you said, Clavia there, Tim, that is a personal best. Rosenbergen, the bef uh, just behind her, goes inside 16 minutes. That's a bit of a benchmark as well. Get inside that 16-minute mark, but Hassan on the screen there. You can see a uh, it is a meet record because last year Pavon Hamid was the fastest female 16 flat. So in the B race, we've absolutely smashed the meeting record in the first race, and uh, you can see just the amount of PBs already on that main screen there. We've got five PBs out of uh, seven athletes. I made it already, Tim, in just the first of our uh, live races on tonight's stream. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. 
I mean, uh, Rachel Franklin from the Isle of Man has run a personal best. Didn't quite get under 16 minutes, but uh, has run a personal best nonetheless. So it's been superb. And just a chance to look at the pacemaking there. The job was done so well by Saskia Millard. Set it up wonderfully. A little bit quicker than was planned on paper. Maybe she was getting urges, shouts from the athletes behind her. I don't know. But she did a wonderful job to set it up so well. Yeah, she did, and that's going to be a theme, hopefully, of tonight, you know, when we start looking down at the quality of times that we're going to try and hit. We're trying to hit inside World Championship qualifying times, and if you're going to stay with us uh, all the way to uh, French time, which is uh, 9.45, the men's A race, we're looking at trying to break 13 minutes of 5,000 metres, which is still that kind of absolute world class uh, benchmark but behind that 1307 they'll be chasing world championship qualifying marks but talking about chasing qualifying times this lady here i think we can see her run even faster when you look at that world champs qualifying time tim which is 1457 i i see an athlete here that can challenge that 15 minute barrier no absolutely when you think she's run the whole second half of the race on her own from the front uh, no company a little bit of wind out there warm conditions james i would say if it's 25 27 degrees that's not ideal that's a little bit on the warm side you know uh, they don't need cold conditions like you get at the be beginning of the berlin marathon every september but you need cooler than uh, sort of about 25 around 20 would be ideal they already have the top eight yeah and again you can see the sb that season's best pb personal best and obviously the MR, that meeting record. And uh, again, the fact that it's absolutely smashed the meeting record out of sight in that B race. Um, I don't think we anticipated that B race to be as fast as that. It took us by surprise. Um, as I said, a late entry, but I tell you what, what a spectacular entry to that. And when you go down that, uh, that second page there, look at that. PBs and SBs are the theme of tonight already. So following on from 2021 and 2022, those high percentage of personal best and season's best, we're already on our way, Tim, aren't we? We absolutely are. Do you know what? I mean, a shout out to the British Miners Club, who in the UK for several decades have... Uh, put on races where there's pacemakers for athletes of so many standards going down to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth races at some meetings over 1,500 or 3,000 or 800. And I think what we've seen there, James, is the effect of good pacemaking and a big occasion for athletes who normally don't get to perform on such a stage. I mean, the majority of athletes in the race have set personal bests. It's absolutely astonishing. Yeah, and I think that what we're seeing on the screen as well, having some entertainment as well, being able to come down to a trap meet and have a beer or just, you know, the, uh, the, the have a beer and cheer in, in lane three is something that Highgate have, you know, put a, uh, a hashtag on. And I think that something, you know, when on running, we're looking at events and how to really build a culture, but also kind of like, you know, make things fun, build a kind of motion to racing. Um, and that's something that you want. You want to be in the sport to a wider audience. Uh, and the fact you've got children here, you can see that mini track on the inside. Um, you've got friends and family will come to a trap meet and it's not just watching you run around a track. They've got to really love you to do that, Tim, haven't they? But they're going to experience something. There's something to do. On have got loads of stuff on the infield, whether it's trying shoes, whether it's getting involved with different uh, challenges. And the fact you can watch some circus acts and, and have a good time as well. It's an evening of really enjoyable athletics. And obviously, yeah, well, actually not just been an evening, it's been a day of enjoyable athletics. But uh, other things going on just make it super exciting. No, absolutely right. And this has got to be done. Other sports have uh, been putting on this sort of inter entertainment around the main action for many, many years. And track and field now getting up to speed. I know this is something that excites uh, Sebastian Cope, president of World Athletics, the global governing body of track and field. Seb has uh, appeared at the Night of the 10,000s, the North London version of this meeting and wholeheartedly approves. It, it brings excitement, it brings a new audience to track and field. It brings also, James, what I really love too, is that intimacy, athletes or spectators rather, can get up so close to the athletes. And there's plenty of sports where you just can't do that. 
Yeah, I think that's the other thing, you know, being able to be, you know, so close and, and create an atmosphere, you know, other sports, you know, sometimes have uh, been better at promoting themselves. But also, I think, you know, giving yourself, you know, runners a chance of all abilities to be part of this as well. You don't often get to be on the, uh, the same field of play as professional athletes that are, you know, some of them will go to the World Championships this year and potentially medal. Uh, but you're on the same track as them in the same program. And, and that's something also is just like building this kind of uh, atmosphere to an event. And I think that music, runners love music, runners love uh, an atmosphere there. And there's nothing more demoting, uh, demotivating than turning up to an event, running 12 and a half laps with a couple of people watching. This is a show. And I tell you what, that first race that we just saw then, where Hassan took off, she was almost performing to the crowd as if uh, she was uh, breathing fire like the, uh, the, the lady on the screen is right now. <laughs> Well, the name of this uh, meeting, Fast 5000, started with a Fast 5000. It is, uh, couldn't have been more appropriate, could it? The way that that uh, first race has pulverized the planned splits, the planned times, and produced much, much quicker uh, timings for plenty of the runners out there in that women's B5000. Next race in the track is the men's B5000, and uh, that's a field of size, well, it's about 20 athletes in it. The plan is to go out at 13.25 turn, but that's 2.41 per kilometer. We will see whether or not they too smash that target with a, a pretty useful pacemaker in there for them. The crowd are loving it. It's like hanging out at a social event as much as at a sports event, isn't it? Great to see. Yeah, it's something that people put on their calendar now. It, it's uh, it's like going to a concert. It's like going to the theatre. Um, I think, you know, watching a race unfold, distance racing is as exciting as anything. You know, the way the drama, you know, kind of develops lap by lap. And, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, if, if 10,000 metres can be uh, super exciting, then 5,000 metres can be unbelievably exciting as well. I think the fact we're seeing children with massive smiles on their faces, uh, absorbing it, I've seen a load of cowbells as well. I've heard a load of cowbells. So they will be rattling their way around. It'll put, almost feel like a, a kind of a Tour de France uh, atmosphere, you know, when they're, they're going up to those mountain climbs with the crowd almost on top of them, um, you know, with the noise, the atmosphere. But I said, the fact people can come here and socialise and as I said, you know, when you bring friends and family to a meet, that's fun as well. They'll they be begging you to run it next year um, and be part of it uh, in uh, 2024. And the fact that Arna are supporting these meets and these track nights are getting bigger and better. Um, as you said earlier, next week, we've only got uh, a week and we're into Vienna. That's going to be another spectacular evening. But then, yeah, the series finishes in December supporting and you know, what is a great meet, the Zatapec 10 uh, after a meal Zatapec. Um, you know the uh, the run check guys don't they 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 love and and have always been uh, you know kind of uh, showcasing the great work that Emil Zatopek did uh, for his uh, home country but the fact that that race out in Melbourne still uh, kind of showcases him as a world class runner and the, I, I love the fact that honor supporting that team that's great. You said it yeah well the uh, men for the B five thousand should be gathering on the far side of the track. Now they're due off in, well, a couple of minutes' time, 8 o'clock local time in Paris. The field uh, has a really good spread of various nationalities. There's Swedes and South Africans and Swiss, French, of course, Algerians, Irish. There's uh, Keelan Kilrahill goes in this one from the Moy Valley Club. He's a 28 to 1, 10,000 metre runner. And because the, these races feature athletes who are, some of them are 1,500 specialists moving up to 5,000, some of them are road runners, half marathon runners, even marathon runners I've seen in one or two of the bios I've been looking through. You get a variety of athletes coming into the, You get athletes coming to this with a variety of different race plans, James, don't you? You get um, some who want to sit in there and kick and go for the win. You want others. There are others who want to push on hard from the front and try and make it a real test of strength and produce a time that reflects all the hard training they've put in. 
Yeah, some will know exactly the shape they're in. Others won't. You know, it's a, it's a bit like a, a game of poker out there. Some will keep their cards very close to their chest because they're just not sure what hand they have. Uh, and as we said earlier, if you tip the balance or, you know, you tip the speed too soon in a 5K, it's a very long way. But for others, coming from that, that kind of, you know, 10K, half marathon, marathon background that have massive engines, they won't want to hang around. They will want to make sure the pace is honest, but they just won't have the top speed that some of the other runners have have in those latter stages those that have you know some really good 1500 meter pe pedigree that they're going to be chomping at the bit if they can stay there so it's a classic one of speed and strength but yeah you're, you're absolutely right athletes especially you know this time you know we're still fairly early in the track season in terms of knowing exactly the shape they're in knowing exactly how they've wintered you know they may have only had one or two very low-key races into that that's why this is going to be fascinating I'm, I'm excited about this b race well, if you're excited about the B race, imagine how excited you're going to get about the A race when there's uh, guys <laughs> who have broken 13 minutes in the A race. I don't know if we'll see a sub-13 clocking. I know that in uh, uh, in Italy last week at the Diamond League, there were 13 men under 13 minutes in Florence in the five Diamond League there. That was a, a world record in effect. Yeah, there's some quality runners over that distance at the moment. And again, you know, we, we saw that with, uh, you know, Women's running last night, Faith Kibbe Aegon running the, the women's world record over 5,000 metres. So France and, and Paris is hot right now for 5,000 metre running. We've seen a very competitive, fast winning, Hassan winning that women's B race uh, in 15.21. The, the wave lights in this, the fastest wave lights, the green lights are going to be set at 13.20. We're looking at the rouge, the red lights at 13.30 and then 13.40, uh, the white lights. So that's really fast running, Tim, isn't it? When we're looking at 13.20 up front in this B race, uh, that they're going to be operating. I think that it's, they're looking at around about 2.41, aren't they, just outside that uh, that time? No, that's exactly right. 2.41 per kilometre to 3K and then maybe wind it up a little bit. Might see them get, even get under 13.20 in this one. This is the B5000. Let's have a look at one or two of these fellas lining up. 138 there. That is uh, Mohamed Reza Abu Tarabi of Sweden, the 33-year-old. Formerly of Iran, holds many Iranian records still. He's a 1330 performer. He'll be hoping to uh, get in amongst the front end of this and perhaps produce a personal best. And I rather think he'll have to. You know, James, we were talking about the flags and how windy it looked earlier on, um, but didn't seem to affect the ladies, the women in that B5000 metres where there were so many personal bests. No, there was, and I think the weather is getting better almost minute by minute. You see, 153 in the middle is the meeting record holder. That's Ellis Cross. Um, I think this meeting record is uh, around about 30 minutes and 20-odd uh, seconds, Tim, away from being smashed to oblivion. But it'd be fascinating to see whether Ellis could be one of those athletes that can challenge it. Uh, I remember seeing him on the streets of uh, London last year, getting a lot of kudos to beating Sir Mo Farah uh, over uh, 10K on the road. But if he's going to turn this field over, he's going to have to run a lifetime best by a number of seconds. Yeah, Cross is best, only 13.46. One six four there. That is uh, Francois Barré from the Rass Club. 13.27 performer. Pretty useful in that uh, blue top, that blue vest. 147 to the right of picture. Mehdi Frere from the Fontainebleau Club. Very strong, great on the roads. He's run a 208 marathon. That was in Valencia a couple of years back. And then last year in Valencia ran his half marathon personal best as well, just outside 60 minutes. He will be, uh, I would have thought, one of those who might want to push it along if he's got good speed in his legs by his standards. They're actually starting and being invited from that back line up to the uh, front line being introduced to the crowd. Barré there, Francois Barré. As you said, Tim, it's a real... Sorry, go on, James. I said it's a real like uh, mix of international runners here, isn't it? So we've got lots of nationalities involved. I think that's, uh, again, the fact that runners are uh, looking to get on this fast train. Um, yeah, we're looking at just over that 64 seconds per lap. But uh, an, an interesting uh, hat on the outside. So uh, whether that's a go faster hat, looks like it's almost got a, uh, a, a little propeller blade on top of it. <laughs> a new technology, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> it is too. Oh dear. 206. That is uh, Victor Boudin from 
from the uh, Artois Atletisme Club. He's a 14-22 performer, so I think he's out there as much for the fun as uh, with any chance of being really competitive against men who have run, well, about a minute quicker. 153, that is Ellis Cross that you mentioned earlier, the meeting record holder. And the pacer with us meant to be Abdelrahman Anu, who is a 335 1,500-meter runner, albeit a few years ago. He's meant to be 32 years old. I'm not sure that gentleman looked 32. If that is him at 32, then lucky him. But it well, may it be that we've actually... got a... <laughs> It looks like a change team. It looks like John Howarth maybe has been moved from the, the A race. I know that because I used to coach John for a, a number of years. So he was originally down to be pacing the A race. There he's on the very outside in the black singlet. So uh, I think he's been moved in to uh, pace this B race. John was the uh, British under 23, 50 centimeter champion last year. He's a sub 340 guy, uh, over 1500 meters and a sub four minute miler. He's on his way back from injury. So this is a perfect workout. Uh, now being looked after by Luke Gunn because he lives in Birmingham. So this will be great to see John. He's a very, very competent runner. So I think he'll be entrusted leading them in the, uh, the first at least five laps of this, uh, this B race, Tim. Well, thank goodness you recognise John Howarth. My apologies. I'm not familiar with John, but this race about to get underway, more or less under starters' orders by middle distance standards. 12 and a half laps of the track. And the wind maybe has dropped a little bit. I can't see any much indication of it out there on the back straight. Are they being called to their marks or not? Away they go then for this B 5,000 metres from the fast 5,000 metre track night. And will these men grasp the nettle? grasp the opportunity to run fast here as well, half as well as the women in the B5000. They did a fantastic job. I tell you what, Sir James, John Howard's a big lad, isn't he? He's a very strong athlete. So, uh, as I said, you know, if you're running sub 340 for 1500 meters and uh, he's got good speed, but uh, not a bad cross country run as well. Bit of endurance in those legs, John, but his twin brother as well. So, uh, they, uh, Rob has been out in the US just having graduated in the States. So, uh, yeah, when they both came to Cardiff, uh, one was at uh, Cardiff University, one at Cardiff Met. Trying to tell them apart was a nightmare as a coach, but lucky I coached them both. But I think by the third year, I'd, I understood who was who. You're reminding me of my coaching the Graffins many, many years ago. The Graffin <laughs> twins, both uh, sort of uh, world-class middle distance runners and cross-country runners. They go through one lap there in about 64 seconds, pretty much 64 seconds exactly for John Howard. He's done a great job. Uh, but you're right, they were identical twins. And, of course, you, you learn very quickly the difference between them, much quicker than anybody else. And other people would confuse them. And I'd go, well, they're totally different. How can you, how can you not recognise the difference? But you, you become familiar with it, I guess, a bit like their parents don't have too much trouble recognising one from the other. James, the wind has dropped substantially. Those flags are hanging pretty much motion, motionless around the track, which is good to see. It is. The conditions have improved. And I wonder whether John, his girlfriend, Saskia, paced the women's B race, or whether she had a quick word about uh, what the conditions are like. Still see the flags are blowing a bit, but they're definitely not what they were about an hour ago. And, uh, yeah, I think these athletes in this B race are just looking to settle in that 64-second rhythm pace. It wasn't that long ago that would have got you to a World Championships. Now we're looking at, uh, yeah, another couple of seconds per lap inside that. It is a time that uh, would get you to uh, Budapest this year. But John, you can see there, we're looking at around about the 208, 209 mark. As he goes through that camera shot, Tim, he's right on pace. Yeah, doing a wonderful job. 145 is up there, Ramdan Wagi of Algeria, the 30 year old. He's a 1338 performer. Uh, but that was in Algiers just in the uh, middle of March. So, with his uh, speed, a 347, 1500 meter runner, he might be hoping for an improvement of sorts. 164 there in the blue, remember, we mentioned him, Francois Barret. 177 moving down the outside, Terence Bizoza of Burundi. Based in uh, Tuscany, he's a 61-minute half marathon runner. They go through there, James. What at about 2:43, 2:42? Well, the, the clock below said so 2:41. One. I'm going with the official timing to give Johnson credit there, Tim. So uh, if it is the official timing, and that was right, then he's right on pace. And uh, yeah, the key now is it's so tough 
front running, and especially with John had a lot of time away from injury. So I'm hoping he built up enough aerobic base to get at least definitely the 2K because it starts to jump on you a little bit. You definitely feel more of the breeze than the athletes that are tucked in behind. But you can see they're almost in single file. All of them through sub 320 through that first three laps. So literally the whole field are on lifetime best uh, PB shape at the moment in those opening stages, Tim. Yeah, on the shoulder of the leader is a 136 Maxime Chaumaton, the 22-year-old who's a 13-22 performer. There he is in that greyish vest. He's in wonderful form. He produced a personal best at 5,000 just last Sunday. Uh, that was in Lucca in Italy, beautiful city of Lucca, just six days ago. And then a personal best 3,000 back on the 27th of May. He ran 7.44 in Grosseto. So he is in superb form. I would have said Chaumaton on the shoulder of the pacemaker, John Howarth, is capable of pushing on here and producing a personal best. And that group of, what, five behind Howarth, behind the pacemaker, just beginning to get away. Howarth moving wide now. Yeah, he's moving wide, isn't he, through the mile mark. And, uh, I mean, that just shows you how tough it is to maintain this pace. Unless he's uh, doubling up and coming back and doing a bit of job in the A race, which he was originally scheduled to do, often paces get moved around. Um, and they, you know, to the, the meet organizers discretion to basically make sure whatever race they needed to pace. So I don't know whether that's the end of John Howworth's night. But uh, again, they're on pace through that first uh, four laps, but there was a lot of running. There's eight and a half laps of running. And uh, yeah, now it's about who in that, uh, that group behind is going to be the person to start pacing the race or whether they're going to start swapping the, the lead, Tim. That's something now that the athletes themselves almost need to negotiate and work out, as you said at the beginning, who's off strength, who's off speed, who's feeling good. There's a lot of running to go in this 5,000 meter B race. Well, I think, I sense the clock will tell us. They went through four laps in 4.15, give or take a second or so. They're coming up to five laps now. But I think Maxime Chaumaton has accelerated here. He's the South African national champion from the 1st of April in Pochestrum. He ran 13.46 there at altitude. And they go through now. What is, no, it's about another 64-second lap, I think. So 13.20 tempo. But if he does hit that, then it would be a personal best for... Uh, Chaumaton is going well and he's stretched the field out there's uh, everybody now pretty much redlining and that's tough that's the way they've got to handle it now for the next seven laps and more yeah Chaumaton looks good Potter's Thume uh, is at altitude and obviously having run 1322 uh, at the age of 22 so he looks really good really strong but you know that uh, second kilometre was a slight increase. I think we got it at 2.39, which took them exactly to 5.20 through two kilometres. Well, it looks like Tim looks like big gaps. Yeah, big gaps appearing, but actually some determined runners hanging onto the coattails of Chaumaton, who seems quite happy to have taken it on. And that's good, James. You want that. This middle section of a 5,000 is always the one where the pace can drop. When the pacemaker drops out, you've got about four laps in the middle where it's not, it's not exactly no man's land, but it's a period of the race where it's very easy for everybody to go, well, I'm not taking it on. I'm not taking it on. And you start looking around at each other, and then you all of a sudden you start losing seconds and the chances of a quick time go away. So all credit to Shomatov for taking on that burden mid-race and uh, pushing on really strongly and he's dragging other runners here surely to personal bests yeah it makes it really hard in some of the uh, other groups as well they've missed the break this is a strong lead group around about uh, six athletes but you can see there's gaps back now and these athletes i think that's uh, franchise barrier so he's a 13 27 man tim and at the moment he's in no man's land which you know when you've still got a lot of laps to run that's going to be a hard way of running. Unless he can bridge that gap. But if they're operating at 64, 65 seconds, means he has to start operating at 63 seconds, which is way inside personal best time for him. So at the moment, looks like this group, they look like they're alternate, alternating the lead now, which again, the next split we get in 200 metres is the 3,000 metre mark. Anything around that eight minutes means that we've maintained pace. So it'd be interesting to see what the overall kilometre split and that 3K split is. Well, right up there near the front is another late entry, not on my card. 468, it's Mouma Bu Goele of uh, Djibouti. And I don't even have a time for him. So uh, a few athletes, and he's taken it up now at the front end. 138, that's uh, Abu Torabi, the uh, former Iranian I told you about. Now runs for Sweden. 
He's the 217 performed from the Dubai Marathon. They go through there, James, with what, about 803 on the clock. 241 at that kilometre, 241.9. So they are pretty much spot on schedule for 1325, but beginning to see gaps appear now. Yeah, that looks a tougher kilometre. They're definitely changing pace, changing at the front. They've got to keep that 64, 65 seconds going per lap. Otherwise, if it starts to drop too much, then there's definitely a split now. There's uh, the, the pair, the duo, starting to pull away. But this group of four, there's still some strong runners in there, That uh, whether they can uh, close that gap. But, uh, yeah, it looks like no one from beyond that, uh, that top six is going to challenge for the lead now. Well, I'm just checking Guella's... Uh stats and he's a 1409 performer he's moving at about 1325 pace he's run 2859 for 10,000 he's a 62 minute half marathon runner that's why he's pushing it hard because he wants to use his strength but he's on schedule here as we see 195 now move to the front that's Muyadin also of Djibouti he's a 1331 performer he's beginning to show signs that he's going to produce a personal best here today by I don't know, something like 45 seconds. He's a 1409 performer. The man in the black vest in second place, looking absolutely supreme. So Djiboutians in one and two. And that gap, James, is growing with every stride. It's about 40 metres. And it is. It's been a good night for them already, having won the women's B race as well. So, uh, yeah, it's it's looking like Djibouti is the, the location of distance runners right now. But uh, that gap is growing. You're absolutely right. Almost uh, every 200 metres, it seems to be going out a couple of metres. And, uh, yeah, at the moment, we are heading towards that 13, 20 clocking. And the fact that these two, I wonder whether they know each other. Obviously, the, the same nationality, slightly different uh, kind of ends of the spectrum. Obviously, yeah, uh, Abram's more of a, a kind of half marathon athlete, bit of strength. So it's going to be interesting to see whether they can keep alter alternating the lap because at the moment, that group of four, whether someone can still bridge that gap, there's still enough uh, track to do that. But at the moment, these two are maintaining those 64-second laps. Well, aren't they just? A 66, mind you, that one. That's probably the slowest lap they've run so far. Guele at the front again. They're swapping the lead. It's almost like they've got an arrangement. They're taking turns. He's 32 years old, though, this Guello fella. And he's giving a wonderful account of himself into the back straight. When they get to the far end of this back straight now, the top of the straight, it will be five, uh, four kilometres. What will the split be? We were looking for 10.44 to be on 13.25 pace. And it's not yeah, it has far outside in. that. Yeah, you can see there, 10.47, uh, you know, for that four kilometre split, 2.44. It's the slowest kilometre of the race, even though they're going away from the group behind. I think, you know, the, uh, the pace, the early pace is maybe just starting to pay now. We're going to need them to pick the pace up. You can see the encouragement of uh, some of the runners, the crowd on the side. We're still looking at quality running this B race. When we look at the meet record, Ellis Cross is somewhere around about 150 metres behind, running probably not far off his 13.46 meet record pace from uh, 12 months ago, and he's not even on the same page right now. 66 seconds, that uh, penultimate lap, or that uh, lap with 800 to go, excuse me. So they have slowed. The wind, just a little bit of breeze. Those flags, not really a problem. The uh, early leader, Shomator, who took it on through the middle of the race. I see early leader. The man who took it on when Howard had dropped his side, leading the chasing pack and now accelerating, James. They're right of picture. And although he's about 40 metres down, I think he's left it too late. He is finishing like an absolute rocket. 600 to run. Yeah, looking at his watch, and obviously he was one of the aggressors in the early stages. Maybe just took a breather, almost like a training session where just uh, you know sat at the back for a couple of reps. And now, when you start to see that in the kind of last 500 meters of a 5k, if you've got anything left, you can start turning the gears. He's got a duo to chase down, but I think as you can see them going through the on marquee, that gap is significant, Tim. Yeah. It is significant. They're not going to get back to them. But these two are going to have a real dust-up now as they go through the bell and the uh, time on the clock. They're about 12.26 as they went through the bell, so they could yet get under 13.25, the original target time for this B5000 metres. The fast 5000 metre B men's 5000 is turning into a real humdinger. Left to a picture, the two Djiboutians, that pairing, 468, Guele, the taller of the two, in black, leads at the moment. Certainly his compatriot, Muyadin at the bell, looked very tired, but he's rallying now, wearing 195 on the shoulder 
of his compatriot. 200 meters to run. The charge going on from behind. 147, that's Mehdi Frere of uh, the Fontainebleau Club. He's heading for a big personal best. Surely his 13.38 from two years ago is about to be revised. But as they come round into the straight, it's a little dust up here between the two Djiboutians. I don't think there's any conversation between this pair as they gave 100% driving towards the line and 195 Mouyadine is going to take it crosses the line there unofficially in 1326 238 that final kilometer so much quicker than the third and fourth kilometers remember the fourth kilometer was a 244 they blasted through that final lap and 1326 or there or thereabouts is pretty much on the money great racing and I think there'll be a lot of personal best behind them yeah, you can see Wheeler crossing the line, Ellis Cross, another athlete, and uh, he saw his meet record absolutely obliterated there by 21 seconds, and he was very, very close to his own time. And uh, Jamal Mohammed, one of the uh, refugee team for the uh, on-running team as well, so getting great support. Good battling behind these athletes. Going down, it looks like Anthony Bamal, who uh, it's about 30, 47 PB. He's going to be outside that, but look at that. A Djibouti 1-2, a meet record, another MR Tim against the screen. A PB in second, and uh, for uh, operating all best as well. And there you go, nice to see Ellis Cross, a lifetime best, set 12 months ago here, and he's done it again in seventh place this time. Not the winner, but there's the winner on the screen in a new meeting record. There it is, confirmed on the screen there, 13.25.84. Quality bit of running, Tim, that was. Well, his full name is Abdi Weiss Muyadin. That's what I was calling him during the race, or the, the caption only came up with Abdi Weiss. But 13.25.84, right on the money. Gwele taking <laughs> a second place. That's Mumin Bu Gwele and Abu Tarabi of Sweden taking third place, 13.33. Gwele, by the way, 13.27 for second place. His personal best that I've been able to research during the race, 14.09. So he's run a personal best by over 40 seconds. I mean, it's absolutely astonishing. Where's he been? And he's 32 years old. <laughs> well, hashtag fast 5,000. It's uh, on, the, uh, on the doors as you come into the meet. It's on the, uh, the social media. It's everywhere. That's exactly why people are coming here. That's exactly what the kind of on-track night is about. It's about fast running. And again, this is just the B-race. There you go, the top nine are on there. And obviously, highlight at the bottom, fast 5,000. And it really does kind of showcase that. 1347, you can see George Weeder at the bottom of the page there. We almost had eight athletes in uh, inside uh, the old record. And that really does uh, bear well now when we go into the A-races, men and women. First four getting personal bests in that men's B5000. It's some mouth-watering stuff from the two races so far. The women's B5000, the men's B5000. There's so much more to come. Don't forget, we've got the men's B1500 next, the men's A1500. That'll be world-class. The women's smile after that, and then the A races for women and men, respectively, over 5,000 metres. It is an absolute feast of great racing. Yeah, do hang around. That uh, that B race goes off uh, for 1,500 metres in about three minutes. Uh, the A race, I'm very looking forward to seeing Jimmy Grecia going uh, over a much shorter distance, but he ran very well a few weeks ago at 3.34. So we're uh, looking to back that up again. He have a very vocal and supportive uh, local French crowd as well. So again, we're looking to uh, get inside those World Championship qualifying times, 1,500 metres, that's 3.34.2 and there's a very strong 40-man field coming. And also, we've got the fun of the mile, Tim. Women have uh, the mile distance, four laps on uh, an extra nine metres. That's going to be super fun coming up later. No, exactly right. And it's funny, isn't it? The mile is, as we see, the latter stages of that 5,000 with the two Djiboutians battling it out and then the chase going on behind. The mile is so seldom run in continental Europe generally. Many of the women's field in that mile have never run a mile before, and yet the American runner, Nikki Hills, who's in the field, has run it many, many times, dozens of times. That's that uh, impressive win there for Abdi Bice. My Muyadin, 13.25.84. Team was very, very impressive and uh, love watching those highlights back. It really does show how the race, you know, was uh, unfolding. John Howarth in those early stages and then the pace was picked up. It changed hands multiple times, but yeah, Dabuti won two. So at the moment, there's uh, been an A and a B race 
and they've occupied the two top spots. Can they keep that record going as more of the circus acts just entertain the fans in between the races? But that men's B race, I think we're set to go in a couple of minutes. So, uh, Tim, we've got a strong field, haven't we, in this B race with some athletes that were very, very borderline again between those A and B races. No, that's exactly right, James. That's exactly right, yeah. Uh, and, you know, there will be, as ever, in all meetings where there's A and B races or even C and D races, you get occasionally a mismatch or an athlete who proves that they were in the wrong race at the start and would perhaps feel they should be in the next race up. But there are guys in this uh, B1500 coming up who've run 336, 337. Plenty of them have broken 340. The target time is 3.37. That, if you like to put it in terms of a mile, is worth about 3.55, maybe 3.54 and a half, something like that. There's always, a, there's always debate about how the conversion should work, but it's, it's about 17 seconds, something, something like that. Yeah, around about 58 Indeed. seconds per lap, Tim. So it's going to be uh, some quality running in that uh, that race. As you can see, our youngsters, Mbappe, uh, top one. He's got uh, the speed and the strength. So again, get these youngsters involved and integrated into a track meet, Tim. I know that's something on running really want to showcase uh, running and make it fun. These are the next generation. So if they come to a meet like this, they remember it. And these could be the stars of the future, couldn't they? Well, absolutely. Who knows? Who knows what we're uh, looking at in terms of those youngsters? I know what we're looking at at the moment. Some pretty amazing uh, display. Amazing display. Oh, my word. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to argue with her. Whatever she says, she's right. Of course, you know what I love about track and field too, James? It is the kind of the, the great teaching ground for all motor skills, running, jumping and throwing. You know, we're all born with the ability to run. We're not all necessarily born with the ability to ride a bike or to swim or to uh, do any of those other endurance sports. But running comes natural to all of us. And then when you layer on a little bit of coaching for throwing and jumping, and you find an awful lot of footballers, funny enough, you mentioned Mbappe just now, an awful lot of footballers who uh, were good runners as kids. George Mills, the top British middle distance runner, his father, Danny Mills, was a, an England footballer, wasn't he? A defender. He wasn't called Chopper Mills, was he? But he was a bit of a hard man, I think, Danny. <laughs> no, Danny was a very, very good footballer as well. So, uh, George, who we expect to see in the 5,000 metres earlier, having run a World Championship qualifying time over 1,500. Originally down for the 1,500, he has moved. I mean, there's such strong on groups when you start looking down at uh, yeah, the on Europe team, obviously the new on Oceania team that's coached by uh, the superb member Craig Mottram. What an absolute beast uh, in uh, in multiple distances, Craig. Uh, but also then you've got the uh, the US team led by uh, Nathan Wittenheim with that uh, you know super strong middle to long distance pack of men and women from Helena Beery to uh, Joseph Andrews to uh, Yaron the Goose. You've got Ollie Hall. Uh, you know, got uh, Alicia Monson who ran last night. That squad alone, uh, I think Jordy Beanish goes in the uh, men's 5,000 later today is so strong and then you've got a whole load of athletes that are individual on athletes and uh, yeah different teams as well so so exciting i just think you know they are really supporting athletes of all distances and they are ripping it up at the moment and we've uh, got uh, a few special on athletes coming up uh, later today and also some of them pacing as well tim yeah absolutely and uh, i know many people feel that 800 meters and 1500 meters are the perfect events in terms of concentration span the the way that tactics can unfold in a limited amount of time you know the sprints are special of course they are everybody wants to be the fastest man in the world the 100 meter champion in the olympics or the 200 meter the longest sprint or the 400 meters has a wonderful symmetry to, to it doesn't it just one lap of the track but the 800 and 1500 meters especially 800 it's where you can go so fast and be chain swapping and moving around for position i like that blend of speed and tactics let's have a look at the field though in this men's 1500 b race kieselberger well Here's the pacemaker, Conrad Kieselberger. Uh, Callum Elson goes in this one, the 24-year-old Cambridge and Coleridge athlete. He's a 340 performer. That was in London last year. Look out for uh, Ben Buckingham as well. Buckingham, better known as a steeplechaser, actually. Won the Australian steeplechase championships back on the 31st of March. Very much a steeplechase specialist. 
I don't think he is due an improvement in his in his 1500 best. He's run 3.39, but that was a couple of years ago. We'll identify the athletes for you more as we get to see them on the start line. Of course, it's three and three quarter laps, the uh, 1500 meters. The target time is 3.37. There are 11 starters. It's quite a small, high caliber field. Four of the field have broken 3.40. And when you get under 3.40 for 1500 meters, it's sort of a, a psychological barrier. It's almost like the modern day sub four minute mile, I suppose, even though 3.40 is worth about 3.57 for a mile there or thereabouts. Yeah, James, no, can, you remember your, for, your, can you remember your first sub four minute mile? I, I can. It was uh, in San Francisco and it was uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning back in 2000 and, uh, 2002. So, uh, yeah, I, it was the hardest thing I've ever done that early, but it was nice enjoying the rest of the day. And actually, uh, it was uh, Andrew Graffy was in the same race, so you were, you were coaching at the same time, Tim. So I think he pipped me in the last 50 metres. What, what on earth were you doing racing at 10 in the morning? I mean, this is a sensible time to race in Paris, half past eight at night. Well, I tell you what, they did a smart thing. There was a, a great a road race that went on and the crowd, we had a crowd because they had a, a, a mass participation 5K race um, and everyone sat and watched a mile race after. So a bit like, you know, this event where you need to think outside the box and obviously a race in the evening, there would have been probably a few hundred people there. But yeah, having a, a mass participation 5,000, uh, sorry, five kilometre race got masses out there. And I tell you what, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, but yeah, as I said, running that hard in the morning, I think I might have run a little a little few seconds faster in the evening but uh, this pacer on the outside Tim he's uh, got an important job isn't he if we're going to get a sub 340 clock in and beyond that in this race and there's lots of athletes that have done that already and there's a few that would love to go sub 340 for the first time absolutely right Kieselberger there Conrad Kieselberger 24 year old German he's run a couple of 150 800s in the last 10 days so he's uh, well capable of taking them out here I think in around 155, something like that. 423. That is uh, Theo Rajor. Recently only run a 349, but he does have good speed. He's a 147, 800 meter runner. 417. That's Yasin Bui of Italy. He's a 337 performer. Three, three, 342 in Grosseto 10 days or so ago in Italy. 427. Callum Elson. Sixth in the World Cross Country in Bathurst in the mixed relay for Great Britain back on the 18th of February. And the British squad that went down there and many Europeans, of course, would have taken the opportunity to get some warm weather training in for two or three weeks. Well, the spectators are going to be treated to an absolute barnstormer of the next hour and a half or so with these uh, 5,000 metre races and 1,500s and that women's mile, high calibre women's mile coming up still coming at us. Yeah, no, as you said, Tim, and welcome if you are joining us. This is the On Track Nights. This is the Fast 5000 from Paris. It's been a busy 24 hours of uh, athletics in the French capital. And as Tim says, we've got a super exciting next uh, hour plus of racing. We've got uh, two high quality men's 1500s, a women's uh -huh. mile, and both A races in the men's and women's 5000. Over you, Tim, for the start of this B race men's 1500. Away they go then. There will be little quarter given here. If they go with the pacemaker, Kieselberger, then it will be quick. And it looks quick over the first 100. Kieselberg there in the white vest. 467 moving across from the outside. And as they uh, head around the first bend. So Kieselberger has got himself out in front and they're already stretched out almost into single file. Well, how will they go through here? They need to come through 300 metres in about 43 seconds. Usually the first lap is a little bit quicker in these uh, middle distance races because they have to set it up. But uh, Kieselberger there goes through, yeah, in about 43 seconds. Good work so far. Yeah, those pace lights are set at 226. So, uh, yeah, we are looking at around about that kind of 155 through the 800 meter mark. So, anything 56, 57. I think that was around about uh, 57 uh, low on my watch there. So, even pace running, you can see it's a quick pace. The fact that it is spread out, I think uh, you can see a little gap back. Cal Nelson, he's a runner that would love to go sub 340. Oh. Very busy on social media. Lots of pushing in their race already, Tim, isn't there? I was just going to say, James, loads of pushing there as they went around that bend. Goodness me, what a shame. 
I mean, crikey, that was really aggressive work going on there. And there was a runner in there who I don't have his number on my list. 467 is uh, not on my list. And he was one of those doing the pushing and shoving. 460 as well is a new number. There's a lot of changes to this field as they head down through with two laps to go. And that's about 141 as they went through there. James, it's going to be quick. He's doing a good job, the pacemaker. Pacemaker is doing a good job. I think we're looking around about that uh, 156 mark. You can see the uh, timing being called out on that far side. There you go, exactly on the nose. 156.01, 58 seconds for that second lap. Now the pacer, if he's going to get to 1,000 metres, has to really work. The lactic will be filling their legs. You can see the grimace. But again, he's doing a great job keeping the honest pace up front. The longer he can stay in there, the, uh, the more kind of benefit the runners are getting. It's, uh, say, I think he's the Ethiopian 19 year old, 336, nine lifetime best is the athlete that is uh, probably the aggressor now, Tim. That's the important part. Who's now going to be really positive on this third lap? Well, it is Adiana Kasaye, just 19 years old. He ran 336 when he was 17. He comes towards the belt. It's going to be quick, there's no doubt about it. Goes through the belt there in 2.40.5, 2.41, there or thereabouts. The pack is still there, though. A lot of these fellows are going to run quick times, if not personal bests, but it's anybody's race, because that is a pack of, what, some nine athletes, ten athletes still there as he reaches 1,200 metres. Yeah, 59.8 for that lap, so it has slowed 2.56, so they need a 43-second last uh, 300. That is more than doable with the quality, as you said. It is safety in numbers. But I tell you what, there is uh, a lot of uh, running to be done in this last 200 metres to see who comes out on top, Tim. 466, Adeana Kasaye, just 19 years old, has a silver medal from the World Cross Country Mixed Relay in Australia back in the middle of February. Into the last 200 metres now, and this is an absolute burn up over the last 200 metres. 424, Thomas Picard coming down the outside. Look at him in the blue, he's powerful. And is he going to get there? On his outside, another athlete coming through. Picard, is he going to get there? I don't know if he did. We didn't get the front on shot there to identify the athlete who may be up dip Picard. He's a 342 Hello. performer, and I think Hello. he's just run a big personal best. They seem to want to give it to him. Very solid recent form, Picard. 150.02 in Poitiers. Uh, just last week, that was last Sunday. It's only his second out of 1500 of the year, and I'm very modest. 352, 339.04, and they've actually given it to Bui and not Picard. So Bui taking it, 417, Yasin Bui, who is a 337 performer. Now Picard to the left of picture there in the blue, all the pushing and shoving, and this is where they're five abreast, there almost wasn't room for them. For a 1500, maybe they did need a little bit more room, but 417 to the left there, Yasin Bui, the 26 year old Italian, coming through to steal, steal that one. He's actually an interesting athlete, an 829 steeplechaser, won the European Cross Country mix, re Relay in Turin back in uh, the middle of December for the Italian squad. But Pika just out dipped, James. Yeah, I think the uh, the local uh, production team wanted to give it to him. He was uh, definitely dipping on the line. It was super close. It must have only been a hundredth of a second. But I tell you what, he won't be too disappointed. That's a three and a half second lifetime best. When you make a jump, he's made a jump now from 3.42.8 to uh, the low 3.39s. That buys him a whole new different ball game in terms of his next race. He's going to get into races that he couldn't have got into previous to this race. So that just shows you it's not just fast 5,000s tonight. Fast 1500s as well, Tim. Absolutely right. Always a little frustrating, I suppose, when you've had a pacemaker do a good job and then the, that the penultimate lap dropped to a 59.8. You can see there, Kieselberger did a wonderful job to set it up. A lot of pushing and shoving in the early stages, despite the pace being pretty healthy. And then that 59.8, once he dropped out, then... Uh, it slowed dramatically and they lost a couple of seconds there. What would have been a 3.36 or 3.37 race as they hit the bell after a slow lap became a 3.39 race. Nothing wrong with that. I love great racing. Great racing is a sustainable quality. Chasing fast times can so often end in disappointment. But, uh, wow, I tell you what, James, I thought Kasai looked uh, absolutely fantastic there with 200 to run. I thought he might get it, but it became a lottery, didn't it, with that sort of burn up through a whole pack in the last 200. 
Yeah, when you look at that home straight shot, you can see the uh, the dodging and diving that runners had to do, and almost just uh, the you know, what line have you got to choose? People's legs are going, and then a fast finishing on the outside, and you can see a great shot there, breaking the on tape. And uh, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I think the photo finish team is still working on it, Tim, to get the official results. And I can't wait to see how many guys went sub 340 in that race. There's going to be a whole host of lifetime bests. I think that winning time come up as 3.39.04 a couple of minutes ago when the race finished. And if, if that's the case, then you're right. I mean, probably about six or eight fellas there have gone under 3.40, quite a few of them, for the first time. Confirms Not a PB what a quick track this is. It does. Not a PB, obviously, if you ask him, Bua, but I tell you what, it shows the Italians coming into shape now. So uh, he's uh, obviously only 3.42 early this year, so he's knocked another three seconds off that. So uh, he's definitely getting faster race by race. Probably wasn't quite ready enough to be in that A race. But uh, yeah, definitely justifies being in a, in a faster heat in his X race. And look, that infield, it's so busy and uh, great to see so much going on. The crowds have been absolutely superb through today. And uh, I tell you what, uh, there you go on the screen now, those results him of that B race. Yasin Bui, the winner, then the Italian, 3.39.04. Picard, two 100s behind. And Gadisa coming through to take a third place. The Ethiopian, 3.39.36. Callum Elson, fourth place. A personal best for him, 3.39.40. That is uh, great. That's almost a, a full second off his personal best for Elson. And first time ever under 3.40. Kesaye, well, he has uh, run significantly quicker than that. The Ethiopian, he had to settle for fifth place there who was perhaps my pre-race favourite, really, when you look at just how talented he is. But uh, I never liked races that were that... When you get six or eight guys coming off the final bend together, it is such a... Uh, you might as well say, well, I'll tell you what, let's all have a 200-metre race. You know what I mean? If, if you have, don't get to the bell feeling pretty tired and stretched and everybody comes to 200 to go feeling pretty fresh and up for it, who knows? It's anybody's race. Yeah, it did make it very interesting. Obviously, there were that many in the pack, and obviously, you know, the way to seed in so many runners of uh, similar abilities. Yeah, it reminded me almost of a, a qualification race, like a, a semi final at World Champs, where there's nothing to choose between the runners, and obviously, that uh, ducking and diving in that home straight, anything can happen. But yeah, great to see those uh, athletes rewarded with personal bests and really good hit outs, lots of seasons best. And as I said, that, you know, as a 500 meter runner, it probably takes you, you know, three, four really good 500 meter races to find that uh, that sweet spot. And uh, yeah, those runners, being the fact that it's still very early and in June, you know, we're looking into the uh, Julys and August to run really fast. And talk about running really fast. So some of the runners in this A race have done that already. You can see on the screen now, so much Meslek. He's already run 3.34.7. So the Italian, he's uh, based in Leeds, coached by Matt Yates as well. So he's looking to get that Chat World Championship qualifying time, 3.34.2. So he needs to find another half a second. So again, pacemakers, so important in this race. It's uh, Julian uh, Rack is the, the pacemaker in this race. And uh, he's someone that we were talking about off air, Tim. He's quality, 147 for 800. He's a 337 this year, 500 meter man. That's so important to have quality of him as the pacer. No, absolutely right. The athletes have to have confidence in the pacemaker and the meeting organisers need to know the pacemakers will do a good job. And it's always frustrated me and you have to bite your lip as a commentator when you see youngsters introduced as a, a pacemaker in major meetings, major races, and they just are not up to the task. It's very, very disappointing. So look at the field on the line up there on the screen. It is quality. You've got a bill in there. You've got uh, Luke McCann, the uh, talented Irish athlete. And uh, you've got uh, Jimmy Gressier there, who's already got a world championship 500 uh, meter qualifying mark. But I don't think he used that. I think we end up seeing him over 5,000 metres uh, later on uh, in the summer in Budapest. The uh, Nordis, the uh, talented Norwegian athlete, he again will be looking into home of uh, distance running right now. You know, Jakob running two sub four minute miles back to back last night in Britain. So, uh, yeah, Norwegian distance running is very, very strong. But uh, so it's Britain's distance running. Obviously, uh, Jake Whiteman, world champion tonight. We're looking for the likes of Elliot Giles, who's uh, gone sub-144 indoors for 800 metres. Also a, a former European medalist over that distance and also 333 over 1,500. So fascinating to see the speed athletes. There's some coming from endurance. 
but obviously we've got some out and out 1500 meter runners in there as well and a really strong french contingent there's uh, lots of french athletes as we've just seen in the last heat that are looking to uh, but put their personal best to uh, a few seconds faster as we go down the field there see moret you've got uh, bernard uh, campion in there as well and i think uh, it's uh, the pacer as uh, McCann just asked the uh, the camera to get out of the way as we're off. This is the men's 1500 meter A race. We're looking at 222 through one kilometer. That is going to be around about uh, 56, 57 per lap, around about 154 through 800 meters. So, uh, and the pace there, Julian Rank has got a really important job and uh, maybe a fall on that start line, Tim. An athlete looks like uh, already around about 10, 15 meters behind. Yeah, that's Noah Baltus of the Netherlands. He's a 3.37 performer. That is quite possibly his race done and dusted. That's really frustrating. The pacemaker, Ronk, will uh, take them long here behind, and then uh, Abele will take over. This is the sort of race, James, you were talking about uh, Elliot Giles. This is the sort of race that Giles ought to be thinking he should win. Not at a canter, because Gressier was in fabulous form. We know that, 3.34, just uh, 10 days ago. But Elliot Giles can use that big kick of his here, just needs to shadow anybody else here who threatens, and uh, then use that 143, 144, 800 metre speed. Yeah, Elliot's already run 145 this year, so he's got a decent 800 in his legs. He also opened up, he ran in Hanglo over 1500, just got pipped uh, by Costco and the Irish athlete running 338. Wasn't great conditions that day. So I think Elliot will have used that as a bit of a lung buster. John Big, his coach down at uh, Brighton, always gets Elliot in great shape. He doesn't do a huge amount of running off the track, does a lot of cross training, uh, uses like a lip to go bike to keep the fitness. But again, he is super, super strong. But I'm excited, Jimmy Gressier, the amount of uh, different celebrations this guy does, whether it's grabbing a, a croissant or uh, a, uh, a, a pastry as he comes down the cross country championships, whether it's diving over the line of the European cross country championships, you never know, Tim what you're getting, but you do know you're getting uh, a bit of uh, spice and, and a bit of personality with Jimmy. Well, they're coming up to 800 metres now. Has the pacemaker done a good job? Yes, he has. 153.58. That is superb. Uh, James, you will know that full well. as a great Miley yourself. Now they can start racing and pushing hard. We are on. This is getting towards World Championship qualifying pace. So we were looking at 222 through that first kilometre, and 153 is right on the money then. If they can run a 28-second, 200 metres here, but it is about that third lap. The fact they've got two paces in this uh, men's 500-metre A race, that is vital because once the pacer drops at eight, unless there's another pacer willing to really sacrifice themselves on this third lap, and you can see that, and it is Jimmy Gressier. He's already run 334 this year, following the pacer, and it's a real battle on behind. Nav Nordis is the uh, Norwegian athlete in there. You see McCann is probably at the back of that group as well. Meslek in the blue. But it is at the moment Giles, who's looking very, very strong, currently in third place. They're coming to the 300 metres to go, Tim. 249 at 1200. Gressier knows full well the danger of Giles. He knows Giles has got a big kick. He's been pushing really hard since the bell, James. He's driven hard down the back straight to try and take this thing out of Giles. And the Britain back in fourth place is looking stretched. Nordas is the Norwegian athlete that's pushed on. He's got a 3.34.7 lifetime best. He would love to also get that world championship qualifying time of 3.35, oh, sorry, 3.34.2. He's into the home straight. Looks like it's Charles Philippe Tabelt who's got to close down the Canadian. But I think it's going to be the Norwegian athlete. They are so strong as a nation right now. It's going to be a massive lifetime best. It's just outside a world lead, Tim. 3.32.4. There are some huge times behind. Oh, no, mate, Charles. Not as there. The 24-year-old Norwegian stopping the clock at 3.32, Tim. I didn't think we were going to see a time as quick as that. That's a massive lifetime best. And I tell you what. Behind him, Charles Philippe Tubber has beaten his personal best, set in Monaco from 2015. So pre-Super Shoes, pre the, uh, the shoes are wearing, and a personal best, 333.9 for Jimmy Gressier as well. We had three athletes, sub-334. That's a huge race, Tim. It's massive, isn't it? Shows how good conditions are. Nordas is quite an awkward mover. I mean, he's not exactly, I don't know, poetry in motion, is he? Head rocking from side to side. A lot of elbows going on, but boy, has he got a big stride. And he's powerful. And he covers the ground well enough and punches the air, James. And he looked to me like he's got more in the tank. 332.39. 
to win by over a second. He just blew them away in that last 150. He did. And I tell you what, that also tells people that this isn't just a fast 5,000 meet. People are going to be coming here next uh, year to run a fast 1,500. When you've got a 3.32.3 .3 winning time, but also can't wait to see the times behind as well uh, because there are a whole host here. We had three on the screen running World Championship qualifying times, but there's going to be a whole host behind. And look at that, some celebrations behind. I think that, uh, and again, the atmosphere and the, uh, the kind of uh, enjoyment here at the meet Wow, I don't think anyone expected 332. The quality of field we had, yes, maybe, but to actually deliver it is absolutely phenomenal. Well, 333.90 for Jimmy Gressier is a personal best. Some consolation there. And uh, Charles uh, Charles Philibert Thibouteau of Canada, a big personal best for him as well. Under 334 for the first time in second place. Um, that was superb. And you know, to be fair to the pacemaker it was set up by the pacemakers they did a wonderful job getting it absolutely spot on as you called it james 153.5 at 800 uh, and then some aggression through that third lap and that is what set it up so well it did uh, the 249 through 1200 meters and i think the organizers got it absolutely spot on here uh, the fact they had two paces one in control of that first 800 and then the next it was about the middle lap, that third lap. Everyone knows it in middle distance, and that's where the pace can drop. We saw it in the B race, that's where we lost a little bit of time. But in the A race, it was maintained. And I tell you what, there was also then a very, very strong finish. Nordas there, as you said, he, uh, he's a strong, powerful runner, and he almost made that last 200 meters look so easy. And look at the times on the screen there. Personal best, season's best. Uh, Monet, the uh, the French athlete, has also just missed the World Championship qualifying time, 334.2. Elliot Charles, that's a big season's best, 334.6. A lifetime best there for Luke McCann, the Irish athlete, 334.76. That's a really, really big run there. And uh, again, we had eight athletes, 335 and below. Mazet there in eighth place. That is fantastic. And I think the French will be happy. Three athletes in the top eight as well, Tim. Yeah, the times are quick, aren't they? I don't think Elliot Giles has run quicker than that many times. I mean, I know his personal best is 333.56. So his consolation for finishing in fifth place is uh, another really, really strong time. And that was uh, a bonus, I suppose you could say. James, that, uh, that really quick time. In fact, that is Giles' third quickest time ever. Yeah, no, I Avec think he'd be delighted, as you can see, uh, an interview with Jimmy Gressier on the screen. So uh, I don't know what your French is like, Tim, to uh, do a bit of translation, but I tell you what, for a 5K runner running the times he's doing over 1,500 metres, it only bodes well. I mean, he's run sub-60 minutes for half marathon not that long ago, Tim, and, you know, recently broke the... Uh, the, the uh, European record on the road for 5,000 metres, but I think he's in sub-13 minute shape or is definitely getting towards that, that kind of mark. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think he's broken 13 minutes already, hasn't he, Jimmy Gressier? I think his personal best for 5,000 is below 13 minutes, but he uh, is a fabulous cross-country runner, made famous, of course, what, five years ago by that slide on his knees as he won the European under-23 cross-country, and then the, as he broke the tape, he uh, collapsed on his face, didn't he, in the mud. That was a hilarious clip. It went viral, watched millions of times, but it, he is uh, nonetheless, when it comes to a serious racing, a really high caliber athlete. And look at that. He took it on from the bell, James, didn't he? Pushing on really hard to try and break Nordas and Giles and the others. And even though he only finished in third place, his reward is that personal best. Yeah, he was definitely one of the aggressors there. He was the athlete that got right on the two paces as well. And there's a great head on shot. You know, the pace that the athletes are running. But I tell you, Nordas, that, uh, that stride, that power in that last 100 metres. And he was just running away from a world-class field. And the fact that there's uh, a lot of world championship qualifying times in there. And Nordas joins, as I said, a super strong nation of 1500 meter runners right now. I'm not sure whether 332 gets him an automatic slot yet in the Norwegian uh, team for the world championships. But I tell you what, they are going from strength to strength. And uh, I tell you what, and I also, the fact that the fast 5000s, fast 1500 meters as well, put this in your diary, 1500 meter runners, for 12 months time. Get yourselves here. Could be some more faster times then as they were today. Absolutely. Forgive us for uh, talking over Jimmy Gressier there. My, I could have tried, but my French might not quite be up to scratch, and I don't want to, A, uh, really struggle, and B, 
talk a load of old rubbish as to what he might be saying. I'm sure he's speaking an awful lot of sense, but um, we'll keep talking in uh, good old English, I'm afraid. Apologies to Jimmy Gressier there, but I'm sure the crowd loved that one. And there's so much more to come. The women's mile is next. The women's uh, mile. Is, there's no A and B race for the women in the middle distance. It's just the mile, high caliber field. And then the uh, A races for women and men, respectively, at 5,000. Crowd's loving it. And, of course, as if they weren't treated to an incredible Diamond League last night with uh, a world best and two world records, I think uh, the world of track and field athletics is still reeling, scratching its head after what took place last night at uh, the stadium in Bercy. Oh, absolutely, Tim. But when you put these two races, you know, these two meets together and you start looking at the times across both of them, uh, it's an absolute festival. And I know lots of uh, athletes that uh, are racing here tonight were watching last night, obviously inspired. And, uh, and there's been a few that did vice versa that raced last night that have come down to watch this meet and be part of this Fast 5000. I mean, as you said, we go on to Vienna next week, so it's going to be even more fast times. But I think the, the on nights are just going to keep building and building and building. And people know you can come here and run fast, but also have a great time. There's a great atmosphere here. And uh, yeah, the spectators have got a treat coming up. Yeah, Women's Mile, I'm really looking forward to that. But also then, you know, two very fast 5,000s. And the fact that we've already had world qualifying times in the 1,500, I would love us to see even more athletes going inside that over the, the 12 and a half uh, lap distance coming up shortly, Tim. No, absolutely. I suppose they're putting on the Women's Mile because of the requests from the athletes. 1,500 metres is the more common distance, of course, the championship distance. And it's a funny one, isn't it? Because the mile is run at various races around Europe, various meetings around Europe. The Dream Mile in Oslo has been going for many, many years in the Bislett Games. Mile races in Zurich and elsewhere. And I suppose the great runners of the 50s and 60s and 70s laid the foundation for that, even though it's this distance that many continental Europeans are not familiar with. It's... Uh, Four laps and nine metres. Uh, so it's just a, a second or so longer than four laps. As we see these ladies preparing for the uh, race to get underway, the women, there are 14 starters. The race two off actually at 10-2. So we're, we're running a little bit late, the meeting. It matters not. I mentioned earlier that few women outside the US and the UK have run a mile. There's quite a few debutantes in this race. There are, Tim, I think the mile... Sorry, James. Yeah, the mile obviously ran a lot in the US and the uh, you know, collegiate system, they uh, they love, you know, completing the mile. But you're right, not the Europeans. We're going to see a lot of season's best and personal best in the mile today, given that the fact they just haven't run the distance. Charlotte Moucher is the uh, pacemaker, by the way, and she's been tasked with taking them out at 4.20 pace. Uh, so obviously around 65 seconds per lap, 64 and a half seconds per lap. Let's go look at these athletes for you. 664, that is Maudie Skyring of Australia, the 26-year-old. Uh, she was a student at Florida State. She was eighth in the Australian Championships in Brisbane back in uh, early April. Skyring was the best of 408. She's an 859 performer at 3,000. 662, Carrie Hughes of Great Britain. Former Loughborough student, uh, was based in Cardiff. Hasn't raced since her 4.15 back on the, uh, in early February. This is her first race outdoors. And there is perhaps the pre-race favourite, Nikki Hiltz of the USA. 28 years old, Hiltz. A Pan Am Games champion back in 2019. Twice US champion. She's a big performer. Her personal best, 4.01, goes back three years to the World Championship semi-finals. And I wonder if she's thinking, maybe tonight she can uh, break four minutes for the first time. She's in very, very good form. Well, she won the uh, U.S. National Road Championships on the mile back on the 25th of April in Des Moines. She won in Bergen last Saturday in 4.07. She won very easily in that meeting in Norway. 6.64 is Skyring. Not quite sure why the camera is focusing upon her so much. There's a very high caliber field here. And... The pacemaker's job, of course, so important. The world best this year, 4.22. Now, that is vulnerable. Edna Jebituk of Kenya running that in Bidgosh just a few days ago. World record. Well, that's an astonishing 4.12 by Sifan Hassan of the Netherlands. She ran that in Monaco three years back. 6.57. That is uh, Alice Fino from Bordeaux. 
holds the national record for the steeplechase. 9.10 she ran last Friday at Florence in the Diamond League there. She's only a 4.09 performer at 1,500, but she's so much better than that. Surely the 32-year-old French athlete can go many seconds quicker than 4.09. Maybe tonight. We know she's in great form. 9.10 for the steeplechase a week ago tonight, or last night, rather, shows that she is in supreme shape. She was 10th in the World Championships last year in the steeplechase. And James, you know, I always think that steeplechasers, to be complete steeplechasers, need to be very competent on the flat as well. Yeah, you need to be explosive, you know, for those barriers, for the water jump. So having a good 500 metre engine is so important, especially when you're trying to operate towards nine minutes. You have to be efficient over 1,500 metres. And I think the extra distance today sounds dark, but that extra 109 metres can hurt a little bit more than the 1,500. I think that's really going to play into her hands. You're right, 409. She should be looking around about the 405, 404 mark. If she does that, she's not going to be far off the kind of 425, 423 mark. The pace is set, the markers, they're looking at the green lights, the pace lights around about that 420 mark. So 65 seconds a lap. You're right, Tim. So if we can see a world lead, that would be great in this women's mile. Well, the athletes are lined up nicely by the officials who have been doing a wonderful job. Just a shout out and a big thank you to all the officials, the volunteers who make meetings like this possible. The uh, 14 starters on the line now, and we'll identify them for more as they get underway. Uh, Cassie Bubris, Rubris Dashal of Ethiopia, the 18 year old in the orange there near the center of picture. She's a 403 performer, did that in Nairobi. May last year. She's the African under 20 champion from uh, early May, over 5,000. So she is strong, Ruberist in the orange. Watch out for her. 668, third from right. That is Vera Cudelier from Cologne. The German is 27. She's a 409 performer. And uh, 665 to the left there, Nikki Hiltz in the white strip. Well, Nikki Hiltz, as I said, one in Bergen last week very comfortably in 407 now that is not super quick for 1500 but she won it easily and i think there's plenty in the tank for her she also is the u.s indoor champion from earlier on this year took uh, the indoor title in albuquerque back on the 18th of february 697 the tall figure in black to the left of picture that's janet chamusto now watch her chamusto the ugandan is my uh, Wink, nod and wink for this one. She won in Nairobi back in the middle of May at the Kip Kano Classic in, uh, by nearly three seconds. She won very easily indeed in 4.01 at altitude and she slaughtered the field there. She's good at cross country too. She's good at uh, 800 and they can get underway now. So the women's mile underway then. High calibre field. If they go with the pacemaker, Charlotte Moucher, then we are in for something perhaps around the 420 mark. Yeah, the early laps are very so important, Tim, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah, the wind has dropped. And the pacemaker has gone out quickly, stretching out. And a single file for the first four or five. And I think it is Chamusto of Uganda who's tucked in second place. Yeah, it's a strong early pace. You can see single file. Looks like Carrie Hughes at the back of that. She's one of the on athletes, the uh, on Europe athletes. There's a strong contingent of them in this race. So, uh, yeah, great to see uh, on athletes supporting the mile here. And, uh, yeah, we're looking at 65 seconds. That tent is getting busier and busier. The noise in that men's 1,500 metres was uh, almost deafening down that home straight. And now it's building even more. So let's keep an eye on the clock. Remember, they've uh, run over 400 metres in the, there. you go. So around about 63 seconds, 64 seconds, because they started that nine metres before the, uh, the finish and uh, line there, Tim. But it's quality up front at the moment. So we are heading towards that, uh, that time. You can see the wave light on the inside. They are right on pace to that first 500 metres. Was well, down the back straight then for the second time. And this field are stretched out in the worst lap. I got it in about 64 seconds. So really good pace making. Four minute pace for 1500 metres. And therefore probably about 419, 420 for these women in this uh, mile race. Looking superb as they uh, negotiate this second lap. Good job being done here by Charlotte Moucher. We have to say, she really hasn't. The gap's appearing, James, because the pace at the front is fast. There's no doubt about it. 
and uh, certainly uh, Chamusto is up to the task. She's tucked in there. Hiltz moving down the outside now in that white strip. 704. That's uh, Mohammed, Sura Ali Mohammed of Djibouti. She's only a 412 athlete. They go through there. 209, 89, and 800. So that second lap may be a little bit slower. Yeah, dropped slightly, but Nikki Hiltz just started to realise that uh, there was a slight gap. She had to make a move and uh, make a, a, a strong run on this third lap because otherwise if gaps develop so quickly in this mile, it's very difficult to pull runners back. But they are right on the limit here. Not uh, many of these athletes have run the mile distance. Hiltz has run the mile. She runs a lot of road miles as well, and she's definitely closing that down. Six, six, seven sides. So uh, Chavasto has run very well. Ugandan through that first kilometre, Tim. Jamusto there with 600 to run, just checked over her shoulder. She will have seen what she wanted to see. That is Nikki Hiltz uh, back in a, a by about seven or eight metres, maybe more, and she's beginning to cut loose. Hiltz is chasing hard, but the problem is that Hiltz, when she realised that the pace was quick up front, she'd given them five or six yards already, I think, and they come towards the bell. So Chamusto has still got that gap. Moving through into third place is 666, Visa of Italy, NCAA champion last year at 1500. She's a caliber performer. There are gaps there in the leading half dozen. But Hiltz now is beginning to close on Chimusto. She certainly grabbed back two or three meters in the last 200. Through yeah, 1200 they're there. Down. They're chasing down, Tim, the green light. The green light is being chased. That is the 420 mark, and that could be a world lead. But that gap is still saying, Tim, it's around about three, four meters with 200 meters to run. Well, they're looking fantastic. Hilts on the shoulder of Chemusto with 200 to run. The rest of them pouring it on as well. Going through that is a Guillermo. She's struggling with the pace up front. It's so hard. Into the final 200. It'd be great to see the battle up front, wouldn't it? Now they come in with 120 to go, and Hiltz has hit the front. Hiltz putting on a superb display here. It's been beautifully judged. Maybe more experienced than the 24-year-old Chamusto in second place. And Hiltz is going to hold on for the win. Streaks away. That's about seven metres at the finish line for Nikki Hiltz. 4.22.09. Wonderfully executed. And I'll tell you what, Janet Chamusto has run supremely well as well. She was probably about a second, maybe a second and a half down. Some quick times there. The fastest time in the world today coming into this race was 4.22.85. And I think Nikki Hiltz has broken that. She has 4.22.07. It's the fastest time in the world this year for the women's oh. mile. Wow. Yeah, Hilt is a superb runner, so impressive, so strong. Alice Fino, I think, had a massive shout as she crossed the line. I wonder how close she's got to that French national record as well. So uh, quality running, and I tell you what, super fast size, there you go, a world lead, WL. That's something that the meet organisers would love to have seen, and they've seen that. And there you go, it is a national record, Tim, in fifth place, a French national record, 426.68 for Fino. For Nikki Hiltz. Clearly delighted with that. And the way it was run, I rather fancy there was more in the tank there for Hilt. James, she really ran a race of two halves almost, a superbly strong second half. And uh, what was achieved on that final lap was quite supreme to catch Chamusta, who was on a charge herself. Here is Hilt down the last 150 and moving away. Yeah, she's a great runner to watch, so strong. And uh, she timed it to perfection. Loads of strength in that last lap. Does a lot of road miles. There's a bit of strength needed in those. And uh, delighted to take the tape here on track night. Night of the super fast 5000s. And I tell you what, super fast mile races as well to go with the 1500s. Tim, we've had something for everyone so far. These middle distance races have not disappointed at all. Well, six, five, seven. Alice Fino, the steeplechaser, will have run a big personal best, I think. 4.26 for her, Fino. In fact, I think it might have been her debut. But Nikki Hills, a comfortable winner, 4.22.07. Fastest time in the world this year. Over a second and a half ahead of second place, the American. Harry Hughes, 4.38. Personal bests galore there for the field. A really superb women's mile. Allez Maxime, on est sur la ligne d'arrivée avec Alice Finot. Alice, 
Quelle course Un nouveau record de France qui tenait. Fino Vin interview Tim having just set a national record in the mile. What a week, Tim, going from a 9-10 steeplechase into the mile. You said, you know, at the start that she needed to improve that speed. She's definitely done that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And she's doing it right, is Fino talking to the crowd there, of course, in the local tongue. But I will talk through this. I apologize, my French, just not good enough to really give a, a fair shout at it. But Fino, 426.68. James, what do you reckon that's worth? About 407, something like that? Yeah, the conversion normally for, you know, 1,500 to the mile, you're looking at, you know, around about 20-odd seconds. Not in terms of today, in terms of someone to run, a, you know, a fast 1,500. You know, you'd expect them to be around about that 20-second mark faster. So, yeah, I definitely a 4-6. So that really does bode well. You know, the fact that uh, she was tenting those World Championships uh, last year in, uh, in Oregon. Whether, you know, now she's definitely getting towards that 9-10 and under mark. Definitely, you know, 9.10 is that uh, that bridge now towards nine minutes. And that speed she's got now over the mile, that extra bit of leg turnover, hopefully then that's really going to pay dividends over the uh, the barriers and the water jump. I'm sure it will. Now, I must admit, I thought here, Chemusto had the race put to bed with 200 to run, easing away. In fact, no, that was 600 to run, excuse me. But I did think she looked in control, didn't you, James? She looked really strong out in front, looked running as though she was running with confidence. And that really underlines just how powerful and impressive Nikki Hiltz's uh, last 400 was. Yeah, Chamuso was definitely, you know, someone that made that race in that third lap, gave Hilt someone to shoot for. That's so important, you know, whether Hiltz was the leader going into that last lap, but she wasn't. She had someone to chase. And coming off that final bend, you know, you could see the grimace, the pain, the mile hurts. Doesn't matter whether you're winning a race or whether you're finished towards the back, it's going to hurt. You feel it in the legs, in the lungs, and Hilt looks absolutely delighted. She's a great runner, great role model, and uh, yeah, the fact she's come out and uh, you know, ran a world lead and led some national records behind her, that's, that's been a super fun evening. So uh, the mile, I hope it stays here. That's something that the athletes don't always get a chance uh, to run a mile. So this hopefully could be an annual thing, and you know, we could uh, definitely get uh, inside that 420 with a few other athletes now jumping on. Having seen the men's fast 1500, I just think the middle distance race is here just going to build and build him it's going to be uh, it's going to need to be a two-day program next year it absolutely is yeah well sir a longer evening of uh, the top elite races i'm told that sir uh, makes nick hills now the 11th fastest all-time u.s performer in the mile and that is quite saying something because the mile has a wonderful tradition in north america going back many decades so to uh, get anywhere near the top 10 is special and hilt well as i said already i believe there was a lot more in the tank yeah and the the difficulty is going to be also making the world championships team in the uh, in the us it's so competitive and and obviously you know running well early on in europe making the travel back and then those uh, us trials they are cutthroat aren't they if you don't get in that top three but you've also got to make sure you've got the world standard as well so hilt i would have thought that 1500 meter spot is definitely something that uh, that, uh, that the the eye would be on the prize having uh, obviously you know, built on the success it was you know such a great meet out in eugene last year the world championships but uh, the athletes the us athletes got to travel a bit far and wide this year to uh, to budapest but budapest would be a great city for the world champs but uh, yeah, it's been a quick turnaround, hasn't it? So from Eugene to Budapest, just uh, 12 months between those world championships. Yeah, I know. Tough call, isn't it? As if there aren't enough championships already for the uh, top Europeans. I mean, look at the Brits last year. Europeans, Commonwealths, Worlds. I was actually really shocked at how many athletes coped with the demands of those three championships. You know, Jake Whiteman amongst them. Others who performed really well at all three, English McColgan and Laura Muir. The, uh, it's a very, very tough cut task. And, and what a lot of people, I think, don't understand, James, is it's not just the physical demands of going to a championships and performing, it's the emotional draining, isn't it, that is so, so tough. You come away from a championship sometimes, and it's not that you're deflated, but you are just exhausted emotionally. And, and that takes recovery time that is very hard to judge. <laughs> 
Well, last year was an exception, wasn't it? And especially for uh, you know a lot of the European and, and Commonwealth athletes with three championships. You know, obviously going from those World Championships, you had the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham straight after, and then you had Munich just a few weeks after that. So some athletes did all three championships, is uh, and that you know that took its toll on some. You know, this year I think they're just grateful they've got the one championship to keep their eye on, so uh, they can uh, definitely focus a little bit more rather than spread themselves too thin. And yeah, you're right, the emotional kind of investment it takes to go into a championship. And as I said, some athletes need to go through super tough qualifications through their national championships. So Nikki Helts is going to have to do that uh, in, in a few weeks in the US. So US championship athletes have to almost do a championship before getting to a championship. Having seen the results in the NCAAs over the last few days, Tim, I don't know if you've seen any, it was harder to make the NCAAs 100 meter final than it was the world championship final last year. Unbelievable. Is that right? Yeah, well, we all know that the US championships every year is the second best championships of the season after the Worlds or Commonwealths or Olympics, sometimes better than the Commonwealths, I think, but the NCAAs is not far behind. It is always a uh, fantastic ground where so much talent is discovered and all the top agents head out there and... Uh, not exactly with their checkbooks, but certainly with some persuasive words to sign up those top youngsters, many of whom, of course, uh, see the dollar sign flashing in front of their eyes and after one or two years of college go, do you know what, that is such a big number, I think I can do without competing for my college. If, if somebody wants to put that in my bank account every month, I'm, I'm up for it. Yeah, absolutely. It's making that decision, isn't it? It's always the, the big one in the US about turning professional. Uh, and obviously, yeah, the standard, though, when you start looking for those NCAAs, that uh, obviously when they start winning and they've still got a few years of eligibility, they've already kind of made it to what they need to, uh, you know, the level they need to be at professional. So they turn, uh, you know, they have to go to the next level. But I think that yeah, the quality of athletes that keep coming through that system, uh, you know, we, we've seen that again with uh, you know some of the athletes on show tonight. But still, some great action. We've got two very fast 5,000s. It's the name of the meet. So this is the name of the game now. So we've got the men's and women's A races. These are two races that we've been super excited about all evening. So we're looking at those World Championship qualifying marks. 13.07 for men. We're looking at uh, yeah 14.57 for women. So again, we've got some quality paces, unbelievably strong fields, and uh, yeah, those uh, that meeting record 15:21 for women uh, and 13:21 uh, for men that were set in the B races. They are minutes away, or uh, yeah, they're not going to be lasting too much longer into the evening, Tim, are they? No, they're not. No, they're not. I think we're just uh, waiting while that women's 5,000 metre field is gathered together. The uh, fact that the meeting is running just a little bit behind time, as I've said, nothing really wrong with that. This race uh, was due underway, James Watt at 20 past this next 5,000. I'm not sure it's going to hit it unless they have caught up some time somehow. Really good numbers of spectators. I sometimes feel as though there's a little bit too much going on in the infield, you know, when you can't see half the race because of the number of marquees and other stuff going on in the infield, then I think sometimes for some of the issues out there, there needs to be a reassessment. I've said that to Ben Pochi, the organiser of the Night of the 10,000s in North London, where, uh, although I wasn't able to go there this year, I was uh, abroad on another gig. He... Uh, comments I heard from several who were there was that, well, you could only see about a third of the race each lap because there was so much on the infield. And uh, it's a fine balance, isn't it, between blocking off views of the athlete actual race unfolding and producing that party atmosphere and providing everything else that may be needed or perhaps not needed on the infield. Yeah, but the atmosphere being at Highgate again this year is just unbelievable. I mean, I, I was part of the meeting back in 2014 um, I did it as a favour to Ben many, many years ago. And so when w I walked into the uh, the arena of play this year to see again, year on year, because obviously, you know, every year it gets bigger and better. You are right, there's probably a level or a balance to, to get right um, with, uh, you know, the, the diehard, the old school track and field uh, nuts out there, but also then, you know, to balance it with those new people into the sport as well. So it's always a fine balance of our sport, isn't it, between, uh, you know, innovation, development, uh, and bringing in you know, a bit of new kind of uh, 
kind of fun and you know experiences to, to those new fans and I think that's it when you look at the Highgate fans a lot of those that's their first ever trap meet so uh, that's all they now know Tim so uh, they expect marquees on the infield of all meets they expect uh, a beer and cheer in lane three but I think yeah I think that's something obviously with this meet and this is what you know on have looked at with the on trap nights that they've taken that model they've tried now to you know obviously take it around not just Europe but the world and I think that's that's such an exciting thing having started out in Mount Sac in May and we're going to finish in December in Melbourne with three European meets in between uh, I just think this is just such a great thing for for athletics but also athletes are thriving on it over a hundred top athletes today running massive lifetime best with a whole load of club athletes also benefiting Tim no, absolutely right. Is this the first three from that uh, men's B1500? I think it is. Good job, but they had two Djibouti flags there, Tim. I think they uh, Hassan got on the stage for the B race win. So uh, they, they had their right number of flags ready. And uh, yeah, the presentation in that B race. So uh, that 1321 victor. And Hassan, where you saw on the podium shortly before that, that 15-21 uh, that uh, clocking in the women's race. It's all about attention to detail, isn't it? So many times over the years, the wrong flags have been uh, provided or gone up a flagpole or the wrong music is played, the wrong national anthem is played. And there are some of the uh, dignitaries or perhaps organisers who have uh, put on this fantastic display of racing at of fast at fast 5000 2023 they can be rightly proud of this and it will grow there's no doubt about it the news will go out far and wide that this is a fast track that produces uh, really quick times in a wonderful atmosphere the athletes will head off back to their different homes around the world and spread the word and that is the best possible uh, advertisement isn't it it is. It's, it's taken out there. And I think the, the live streams and, and getting it out to a wider audience, I mean, again, that's something that, you know, On have done so well, you know, getting it out. And in terms of, you know, breaking down barriers, and that's what this is about. It's about opening it up to different, uh, you know, people and the sport and as they want to create, you know, a bit more emotion around the sport, but also take it out and, and really showcase. And I think the fact we're showcasing fast, you know, running tonight, but obviously in a, in a kind of festival atmosphere, I mean, it's the best of the sport. And I mean, you know, this uh, women's A race that they're lining up very, very shortly on the back straight. You know, when you go down the list, I mean, you've got uh, 29 athletes on the original start list. We may have lost a couple, but uh, yeah, we'll take you through them when they come up on the screen. But yeah, we're looking at those wave lights going towards the 1440 mark. And that really would be, if we can go sub 15 minutes, that's, you know, that really is quality running in this women's uh, A race, 5,000 meters coming up very shortly. Absolutely, in the uh, World Championship qualifying time at 5,000 metres is, what, 14.57. The strength and depth at women's 5,000 still trying to get up to the same as the men's, James, because with the best win in the world, 14.57 is a much, much softer time than the men's standard of 13.07. Yeah, it's a little bit of a difference, but uh, obviously we're fresh from a women's world record last night. Faith Kip Yegon, 14.05 in that race last night. So Elizabeth uh, Giddey took the pace on. She almost uh, ran uh, her own world record out of the equation by pushing the pace on last night. And that uh, that fast, I think it was 27 seconds, I think, for the last 200 metres. You know, Faith fresh from that. Uh, that world record shows you that speed going from 3, 5, sorry, 349, 1500 a week before. That speed versus strength. And yeah, Faith showed that last night. But in this women's race, we've got the likes of Nadia Bacaletti, who's uh, love watching her race. Very, very strong Italian. She had great support out in Turin uh, before Christmas in those European cross country uh, relays as well. And then uh, we're looking at uh, the seventh place in the Olympics over this distance. But uh, there's a really strong field. You've got uh, Alana Bray, who uh, won the uh, European Cup 10,000 last week. Uh, also in France in very hot conditions. So interesting to see the turnaround, Tim. I don't know what your experience was or uh, having coached athletes. That turnaround from running a 10,000 on the track a week ago, we've got a few that have done the European Cup and then trying to run a fast 5,000 a week later. What's your experience of uh, recovery between the races like? 
Well, everybody's different, you know. I mean, look at Hassan last week. She ran a 10,000 one day and ran a 1,500 the next day. I mean, this generation of athletes... <laughs> this generation of athletes that are out there now is so different to when I was running many, many years ago. And, and you know, you're close to it, James. You're coaching now. I was going to ask you, how do you explain this generation of athletes like Jakob Ingebrigtsen, like um, uh, athletes who like Kibiegon, who are running world-class times at 1,500 metres, breaking world records, and doing the same at 5,000. Now, that was almost unheard of until this last 10 years, and that's probably being generous, probably less than that. Now, I'm not, you know, shoes is the obvious gorilla in the corner of the room, but I don't want to necessarily predict what you're going to say. But there are athletes now running middle distances and, dare I say, long distances in a spread of ability that has never been seen before. Yeah, obviously shoe technology's had you know a part to play, but I think training's got a lot smarter. Uh, the volume and the conditioning levels of athletes have gone up. Um, and you're right, yeah, uh, Sivan Hassan, that, uh, that double, there's not been too many double backs like that, you know, running sub 30 minutes for, for 10K on the track and then running sub four minutes for 1500 you know, the next day, but also off the back of winning London just uh, a few weeks before. That is you know, some type of range as the presentation for our 1500 meter runners and also shows you the, uh, the level of support the, the Euros that these athletes are, uh, are winning in the 1500, it, it all goes a long way. They've got obviously a lot of expenses through the year to pay for those different training camps. The amount of you know altitude camps that athletes need to spend time at, the amount of time that they need in terms of physios and uh, and masters and, and everyone in their team. That yeah, there's all of the expense to it. But uh, yeah, we've got I think double that prize money coming up in the two uh, 5,000s coming up. So those athletes, they won't be worried too much about prize money, but it's an absolute nice bonus uh, if they cross the line in those positions. And I think the 10,000s, Tim, go down to 10th place for prize money. It's, it's quite deep in these, uh, these two races coming up. 5,000s, yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, they, the old uh, learning is to not think about the money when you're racing stick to the program stick to what your coach is telling you what your coach and uh don't let the agent get involved too much necessarily because agents like to keep one eye on the old greenbacks as they say but yeah a little bit of prize money helps so an interesting british contingent in this race and um, a lot of them on uh, sponsored athletes so uh, amy eloise markov who were uh, former european indoor uh, 3000 meter champion so uh, look out also in that race was the, the medalist uh, Verity Ockerdom, who was bronze medalist in that race. Uh, she also goes in this field. And uh, Amy Pratt, World Championship, uh, you know, seventh placer in the steeplechase. And last year she was also fourth in both the Commonwealth and the European Championships. But uh, she's got a lifetime best of 15.29. That would need some revision. And obviously, yeah, to try and back up the fact she's run 9.15 in the chase. So uh, it's going to be fascinating, but uh, a really strong East African contingent in there. And uh, some of these athletes looking to try and make a name for themselves. You know, we saw the quality last night. We saw the depth in uh, Ethiopian and Kenyan running, you know, even to make a world championship team. So, yeah, that time, 14.40, that we're going to be chasing. Some athletes, you know, would like to run even faster than that. But I think, again, pacemakers are going to play a really important part early on. And again, we're looking at around about 70 to 71 seconds per lap would, would see us operate at that definitely inside world championship time. But, uh, yeah, definitely if we can get towards that 14.40 mark, that would be great running tonight. It's a big, big field for this win. 5,000 coming up as we see the uh, first three on the roster from that 1500 what a race it was what an evening it's turned out too James I thought earlier on the clouds uh, the sky looked a little grey and perhaps a little threatening but the uh, any storm that may have been suspected or worried about has missed this part of northwest Paris and uh, it's a lovely still glorious June evening no, you're right, Tim. It's a beautiful evening now. The wind has dropped from earlier. So temperature-wise now, I think it's around about 22, 23 degrees. So it's, it's dropped. I mean, uh, you know, that for you know, 13 and, and 15 minutes of running will be absolutely fine. And there's the uh, top spot of uh, the women's 1500. Nikki Hiltz, great bit of running. Those uh, pink socks and white singlet. And uh, she'll take home, I think it's uh, 3,000 uh, euros for winning that uh, women's uh, mile race. Yeah, and she didn't just win it, she dominated it, Nikki Hiltz. Brilliant running in that women's mile race to run 4.22.
and come home comfortably the stronger in the latter stages when it mattered. And there's many, many more seconds in the tank for Nikki Hiltz, no doubt about it. She can go a long way under 420, I would say, on the back of that performance. Mighty, mighty impressive. And then the other one is, you know, breaking four minutes for 1500. That is still a massive, you know, milestone in women's 1500 meter running. And uh, there's some, you know, very fast 1500 meter races to come. The, the Diamond League's obviously gathering uh, in uh, in full force at the moment. And yeah, obviously getting towards uh, Budapest and making sure people get on the plane to those world championships. But still very busy on the infield here. Still loads of spectators. They uh, reckon that we're up to uh, around about 5,000 in total. Loads of stuff going on, circus acts, loads of uh, food, loads of places to uh, sit and chill. People sat having a nice beer on this beautiful Saturday evening in the capital city of France. And just, yeah, what, what a 24 hours of uh, athletics that uh, they've been treated to. I mean, uh, you, you'll be uh, hard pushed to have found a, a better 24 hours, Tim. No, absolutely right. Yeah, Paris will be buzzing. Those Olympic Games a building you just sense that they are going to be very special you know i went to the sydney olympic games in 2000 i thought they are the best ever they cannot be beaten nobody will match this and then i went to london 2012 and i thought yep yeah, that is actually even better but i think there's a strong suspicion now that paris will top the lot you know you look at the plans they've got for using the seine you look at the mass participation road running races that they're planning uh, the ticket prices, I think, is definitely going to send a world, set a world record from what I've been hearing. I saw a figure this morning, somebody saying 600 euros for tickets. Wow. So, uh, yeah, Will you that, be going, that James? <laughs> Not at that price. <laughs> I'm going to I'll have to make sure an athlete of mine uh, qualifies so uh, someone else picks up the bill. But, yeah, that's, that, that, that outprices certain people, which is a shame to a degree. But, you know, to put on major events, you know, it's not cheap, is it, these days? And you've got cost to cover. And it, it, if, if there's people that are willing to pay that price, then, you know, obviously that drives up the demand of it. No, absolutely right. Absolutely right. So I think the presentations have been done in those uh, earlier races that we've just seen. So the women's mile was the last presentation we saw. So a slight delay in the programme, but uh, not by much. And uh, I thought uh, no wonder that would be a, a DNS, not start. She was down to race 29.47 in Hengo this year over 10 kilometres, but she raced last night in the Diamond League 14.42. So unless she was doubling back, I didn't expect to see her again. But uh, you can see on there, we've got a strong contingent. So uh, from uh, Kenya, there's a, a good uh, Ugandan uh, number of athletes on show as well. But again, international flavor, Australian Rosie Davis in there, Camilla Richardson, the uh, Finnish athlete, already the pre-mentioned Amy Eloise Markov, the on athlete uh, is uh, on the bottom of that page. Kelly Thackeray, another DNS, uh, I think uh, away, putting a training block in in uh, St. Moritz, I believe. Marcel Garcia is another on athlete that we look to go well. Winner Coletti, so uh, the uh, NCAA's former uh, champion there. She ran very well at night in the 10,000s, taking uh, second place there, 13, uh, 31.04, just ahead of uh, Batas Galetti, who uh, just missed that tally record there, 31.06 in Highgate for third. But uh, this is more Batas distance and having run 14.46, I think she would love to go even faster than that. And again, just a few more DNSs, I think Ockenden, who was mentioned earlier, but good to see Klein in there, who uh, we uh, expected to see doubling back from winning that European Cup and uh, strong German team that uh, ran in uh, France just a week ago, just behind. We can see uh, Sela Bassani, the Kenyan, 14.48, and I think uh, I can see Amy Pratt and Steph Twell, uh, two British athletes just on that second row. But been on the second row for a 5,000, Tim. There's so much running to uh, to happen. I don't think they're going for a waterfall start with this race. Looks like it's going to be uh, a one start line, unless it's just the sheer numbers. I wait for the camera to pan out, Tim. Yeah, cross-country style, I think. It could be just a little bit of pushing and shoving and every man for himself or every woman for themselves. But... Uh, they will sort it out. It's just a shame, I suppose, that 5,000s begin going into a bend, isn't it? Not ideal. And there, it looks like they could be using a waterfall to start. There's uh, one of our paces on the outside. So uh, I think uh, we're looking at uh, Charlotte Molach was one of the, uh, the paces. So uh, we're looking at around about that 70 seconds per lap. And uh, we had originally 29 on that start list, but that has uh, come down uh, somewhat. 
which uh, will definitely make it uh, a little bit easier for the organisers, for the runners in those early stages. Pruvati, Katonga, another very good Kenyan. And I talked about earlier about road races that uh, we've had in the last few weeks. There's uh, been a very good uh, road race in Vienna just last week where uh, a number of athletes went sub-15 minutes on the road. Some athletes run much better on the road and they transfer it poorly onto the track. Others, uh, we used to see that you, all should, you know, always ran a lot faster on the track, but uh, it's become a lot closer in terms of uh, that uh, that difference between the two services. Ray there, you can see on the outside, we're in 5.10. So we're uh, just... Uh, just looking as if uh, she's wanting to get this race on the way. Five away on the inside. That's the over Chep Gengo. Also the uh, Kenyan and uh, very, very strong again over uh, 10,000 metres on the road. So Valencia, a 30-40 strength in those legs. So strong field. They're still organising them, Tim. This looks like it's still going to take a few minutes before we get on our way. Yeah, but that's OK. It just makes the tension rise. If it was a cool, windy evening or wet even, then the athletes might be getting a little frustrated with any delays, James. But this is fine. It's a lovely warm evening. They'll have warmed up and uh, hydrated just right, I'm sure. And they're uh, itching to get going now. But another few minutes won't, uh, won't matter in these very, very good conditions. If anything, just makes things, uh, tightens the, the nerves a little bit more, a bit more adrenaline in the system. And if you can channel that and learn to control it, which most elite athletes do, then that's a positive. Yeah, Francine uh, Nema Casanzo is the Burundian athlete, so another on supported athlete. So, uh, again, 13 27 at Highgate. Some of these athletes at Highgate, so uh, it'd be uh, great to, uh, to hear their uh, comparison of the two meets or the fact that they're supporting both these meets. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's something now that will grow, you know, obviously coming off uh, a good, strong winter. I'm running the 10,000 metres before sharpening it up a little bit more, but towards 5,000. And some of these athletes are making that decision, Tim, between whether they're going to go 10,000 at Worlds or 5,000 at Worlds or whether they're going to chase again that uh, that 10,000 metre qualifying time, which is 30-40, which not everyone hit. It was, uh, it was outside of the reach of some at Highgate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you... Uh cannot predict the way these races are going to unfold. Sometimes targets are hit with uh, a good margin, good cushion, and other times it just doesn't uh, go quite right. This is a long, long delay. This race was due off at 20 past, was it I said? Yeah, 20 past, that's 15 minutes ago now. So just a little bit of organisation. Tim, yeah, I, I was given say, the, James, the, the officials have the got to get it right, haven't they? Sorry, go on, James. No, absolutely. Just given, I think, the uh, the number of athletes, it's just placing them in the right order and uh, just making sure they get them safely on their way. So I think we're moments, Tim, aren't we, away from this uh, Women's A race? So uh, one of the uh, eagerly anticipated races of the evening. We've already seen some uh, phenomenal racing in the men's and women's A and B 5000s. We've uh, had a uh, superb 332, 1500-metre men's win. Uh, we had a 3.39 men's 600 meter B race, a world lead in the women's mile. So uh, what can we see in the women's 5,000 coming up very shortly? I've got a sneaking feeling it's going to continue. More of a moving target in a way at 5,000 metres, more time for something to go wrong, for adjustments in the race, slowings and so on to, to affect the overall outcome conditions are so good and these athletes are up for this and I wonder with subliminally too James subconsciously whether or not you know the events last night at the Diamond League meeting will have affected some of these athletes they'll have watched that without any doubt every single one of them to a man many of them will have been there I suspect and they will have been inspired by what they saw the world records the world best by Inge Brits and the the fabulous racing elsewhere I mean the men's 800 that closed the show last night was super fast the depth of it was astonishing and you know that sort of rubs off I think even if they're not really thinking about it yeah, was it seven guys sub 144? I mean, that was you know so, so strong. I mean, I think it does. I mean, when athletes watch other performances, and also I suppose it moves on the mental parameters. You know, when we're seeing women getting close to breaking 14 minutes of 5K, that's the next barrier, isn't it? Um, you know, we obviously seen Faith go inside three minutes and 50 for 1,500 metres. So, yeah, I mean, it changes, you know, the, uh, the, the parameters of uh, what is good running. It talks about that world standard. That will start shifting as well. 
as runners every year keep getting faster and faster. But they can only race what it is at the moment, 14.57, and many of these runners will have their eye on that. So if you're looking at the, the wave lights on the inside, Rouge, the red, will be the World Championship time. And we're looking at 14.40, that is kind of the, the goal time for the meet, which will be the, the green. And, uh, and then there's, I think it's a 15-15, uh, which is still very good running. That's still way inside what we saw in the B race. That will be the white lights behind as well. So the, uh, the starter, final whistle to the, uh, the timing team. And we're going to get on our way in this women's, B, uh, women's A race for an on for that fantastic women's B race earlier today. So the gun is almost up here on the track night. Fast 5000s, women's A race. And there we go, the anticipation. They've been waiting for, uh, it seemed like, forever on that start line, Tim. And they're on their way, 12 and a half laps, the women's A race. Yeah, they're impatient to get going now, aren't they? Let's hope there's no misjudgments in tempo. The pacer needs to get it exactly right. I always find that funny when an athlete is right on the outside and they zip straight across to the inside instead of running the tangent. <laughs> Why not just head for the far end of the track where you need to rejoin the inside lane and uh, save yourself a couple of metres? Well, it's interesting. The only person that was on the outside lane was the pacer. So the other races, they have split them in that waterfall start where uh, they do obviously split them half and half. So it looked like they had uh, most of them on that, uh, that inside lane. So the pacer was the only one coming across. So looks like it's fast. Remember, we're looking at around about 70 seconds per lap. So when you can see from uh, front to back, it's almost 50 metres, Tim, in the first lap. This is quick up front. It is quick up front. Not quite as quick towards the back. And they go through their wood. And about 67, I reckon, James, 67. Yeah, it was 67 for that uh, first lap. Well, that's you know, that's operating low 14-minute pace, so it has to settle down. Sometimes with a large field, it's about getting out, getting into position. And, uh, yeah, it's a tough thing to do early on is uh, to lock in and make sure you're not running too wide as uh, that head-on shot shows that some runners are trying to make their way into position. You can see uh, that's uh, Alcilem, the Ethiopian, wearing 5-2-1. He's a 15-14 uh, athlete. So some of these athletes, their personal best team, when I went through, I'm thinking that's going to be obliterated in this race. I mean, they've got some strong pedigree over longer distances, some very good cross-country runners in here as well. But for some, they just haven't seemingly had the opportunity to run a fast 5,000, and that's exactly what they're going to get tonight. No, exactly right. Of course, you know, there are many meetings around that are very, very selective and choosy. And I hear stories from some of my friends who are agents regularly about how desperately they're trying to get athletes into races and they just cannot get them in. And uh, these athletes are all so grateful, so pleased to be able to race in a meeting like this, organized by their sponsors. And where, fortunately, conditions are absolutely superb. Nobody can control the weather. You control everything else, but not the weather. And yet, they have struck it lucky tonight. And this is going to be quick. There's no doubt about it. 72 seconds per lap is 15 minutes. What are they going to be coming through 1,000 meters in? It needs to be three minutes. Looks to me like it might be a little bit inside that, James. Yeah, we were looking at 2.57 was the goal pace for the paces, so 2.55. So, yeah, that's operating inside. That's about, uh, yeah, 14.35 pace. So that's really good pacing. So, yeah, they're inside the 14.40. You can see the wave light that the pace is in front of. So uh, they're doing a great job. And they are start to splinter, splinter groups. So not everyone's on the back of that, uh, that pack almost. So uh, there's going to be some long, lonely running for some athletes in there because, yeah, the pace up front, has been brutal for that first kilometre. But that's exactly what they wanted. These athletes need to step up now. You know, when you looked, I think, at last night in, in the Diamond League, I think 14.21 got you something like uh, fifth or sixth. I think 14.45 got you 10th uh, place. So, yeah, these athletes now know that they're going to have to start shifting their, their own mindset and have to start thinking about 14.30 uh, being a mark that they need to get towards tonight. Well, Britain's Steph Twell is right at the back of the field, the Aldershot Farnham District athlete. She has had so many injury problems over the years. Commonwealth bronze medalist way back in 2010. 
And it's not looking good for Twell at the moment. Let's really hope she can put, keep it together and move up through the field. But she's way back off the front end at the moment. And that lap, James, 72.05. We were talking about 72 seconds per lap for 15-minute pace. So that's really sound pacemaking. Yeah, Sheila Bishanai is the Kenyan athlete that is in the tour. It also looks like a Barcelona kit. So uh, the uh, athlete that was uh, third in the Commonwealth Games last year. So uh, she had uh, fond memories of that uh, Birmingham Stadium and that crowd that uh, roared on uh, Ailish McColgan to that absolutely phenomenal uh, you know, Commonwealth uh, gold medal. And uh, tonight, there she is. It is a Barcelona kit. I think they do, don't they, have a, a, a team, don't they, Tim? The, uh, the Spaniards are quite clever, aren't they, with linking some of their clubs and organisations together. So I think that's not just a, a, a fan of the Barcelona Football Club. I think she's running for uh, the Barcelona team there. Well, yeah, I mean, I love that European model. It's, uh, you know, in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, and in other European countries, Italy as well, you've got these multi-sport clubs. And, you know, for example, Sporting Lisbon, the football club helps support the other sports, whether it's um, a, a sports that produce good money in their own right anyway, like basketball, say, or sports that do need some financial assistance. And unfortunately, that's not been adopted in Britain. I wish it were. Um, you know, you get these football clubs that are obscenely rich, awash with money. Now, I love my football, but they, they don't help the community outside of their own sport in a sporting context. They don't help other sports in the in the city. And, and I would love to see that happen. They help charities. They do a wonderful job for charity. But, you know, you're dead right that what they do in Spain and Portugal and one or two other places is a, is a brilliant model, just, you know, assisting the whole genre of sport. So this is going to be the 2K mark, Tim. So, yeah, we're back to the original pace that was requested. That's 257 per kilometre. So we're 5.53 through two kilometres. So we're right on the pace we wanted. You see the athletes there going through there, just outside 15-minute pace, probably 15-20 pace. And uh, you see uh, Amy Pratt was one of those in the uh, on singlet going through. But at the front, you can see those wave lights are getting away slightly. That was the 14.40 mark. So uh, at the moment, that's not something they're chasing. 6.91. That's an athlete we talked about earlier, Winnie Coletti, who's uh, the USA athlete originally from uh, Eritrea, and uh, she won NCAA titles, running very well, I think, for uh, it was New Mexico, where she was based in uh, in Albuquerque. And uh, she's moving very well at the moment through the different distances, and uh, she's uh, got a great uh, team. I think she's part of, uh, the, I think she's going to really continue to develop. But I can see her probably ended up being a marathon runner, but right now trying to develop her speed over the shorter distances. She's run sub 15 minutes, but having missed the World Championship qualifying mark in the 10,000 at night of the 10,000s uh, back in Highgate tonight, I think goal number one for her is to make sure she gets that World Championship qualifying time in the 5,000. Well, Bichenye is leading now. Seven minutes on the clock, still a long way to go. They're not at halfway yet. Now, is she going to push it on here and stretch them out? Or is she going to let somebody else take it on and rely upon her speed? It's uh, an option you have if you're amongst the favourites in big races like this and you've got the full armoury. 5-2-1. Just uh, checking Ayachu. Is a 1514 performer. She's operating at something like 20 seconds tempo quicker than she has ever done before. Tiny little figure there. Busenye is huge, isn't she? She towers over the rest of that leading pack. Yeah, she's a tall runner, and they are swapping the lead out as well. So I think that's uh, is going to be a grateful thing. You don't want to be on the front of that lead group too long. Given that there's uh, there's six athletes, it's a strong six athletes in at this lead group. So uh, in just under around about 250 metres will be the three kilometre mark. So again, we'll see whether they've continued having lost the pacemaker. Pacemaker did a great job through that two kilometres, but it's a tough bit next couple of kilometres to make sure they maintain the pace in this women's A race. Those, uh, those green lights are getting away from them for that 1440 mark, but you can see that red light, that world championship mark light there, Tim. They are way inside that at the moment. Boy, what a spread. I mean, from the front of the field to the back, it's about 150 metres. This is the uh, lead pack coming down now, as you said, James, to the three kilometre point. Anything under nine minutes would be good running. It was 5.53 at 2K. This should be about 
7.50 something, uh, sorry, 8.50, 8.51.98. So a slightly slower third K there. The kilometres have got slightly slower, haven't they, the second and third Ks, but that's still great running. Way, way under 15-minute tempo. Yeah, a slight drop, but only just by about a second. So as long as it stays inside that uh, that three minute per kilometre, these athletes at the moment, all six will be inside that World Championship qualifying mark. But it's just the case now, if they can pick it up, we would love to see that, uh, that clock in be towards the 1440 mark. But also the athletes behind know that they're very close to that world standard as well. But also whether anyone can bridge the gap, it looks like it's significant that the winner is going to come from that uh, that leading six because trying to close the gap, Naomi Chukengo, the, uh, the Kenyan athlete, and there's a big, strong group. So Ray's at the back of that as well. I don't know whether she'll close that gap. See, uh, Marion, uh, I think uh, Deki, uh, I think it's the Austrian athlete in there as well. I don't think she's going to close that gap either. No, and Ray is a good athlete. So uh, it shows how quick this tempo is, under 14.50 tempo. She can't live with it. All East African, this contingent out in front. Familiar sight, of course. And they are sharing the lead. Bersenye now back out in front, pushing it along. She looks very relaxed, those long, long legs. Don't look as busy as the two athletes at the back of that group, for example. Oh, a little bit of a clip there. I think the athlete in the orange shorts clipping the athlete in front of her. Nobody went down. Nibret Lemlem, I think, is uh, one of the athletes in the uh, centre of that. So uh, fifth in the World Junior Cross Country Championships. So uh, and a, a good kind of 71-minute uh, half marathon recently. So she's got a good engine. And, uh, yeah, having you know, when you watch that World Junior Cross Country Championship, anyone that gets top 10 there, Tim, is of you know, real pedigree. So she's stepping up today to the senior ranks very well. And this, you know, if she stays in the kind of pace and, uh, and company she's in at the moment, it is going to be a really good senior kind of development for her. Well, 11 minutes on the clock. We're getting to the business end, James, of this 5,000 metres. I always found with a couple of minutes to go, two or three minutes to go, you could grit it out and sometimes in severe discomfort you could last two or three minutes if you're in trouble mid-race be like a marathon really in its own way then you are in real trouble because you've got a long long way to go but over the last kilometer most athletes can rally and just uh, make it mind over matter so to speak they can the next split we're going to get to him is the four kilometers so they're down the back straight so again, in terms of the repetitions, the amount of training, I mean, they're covering over 160 kilometers per week, you know, up to 100 odd miles a week. But in terms of repetitions, lots of kilometer reps. So they will know this territory very well. And often it's about picking it up. There you go, 259, the slowest kilometer of the race. So it's gone to 1151. So it's still way inside World Championship time, but I expect the last kilometer now to be the fastest. Given that there's six athletes in contention, Tim, someone's patient has to break and someone has to be the aggressor now. Yeah, World Championship qualifying times, you know, if they're still looking at something around 14.50, that is super fast. Uh, bragging rights at stake, prize money at stake, and not insignificant prize money for uh, many athletes in this race. Not all athletes sign six-figure sponsorship deals. Five to one, they're just dropping back and suffering now is Aya Chu. She's a 15-14 athlete. She was on schedule for a, a massive personal best. That may be uh, uh, just a minor personal best now, although every every kind is welcome if you break it by a minor margin. That's still great running. But we're down to five, James. And uh, interesting, because Bichenia is still out in front, isn't it? And beginning to wind it up. I sense a slight acceleration there down the back straight. Yeah, Bichenia looks very strong. She's got a long, rangy stride, but you can see there's definitely pain X on her face and almost a stumble then by the five athletes behind. They know with 600 metres to go, someone if feeling, you know, if they're feeling good has to make a move now because, you know, five athletes, it's still very, very close in proximity between them all. And as fatigue hits in, you don't want to miss the break. You don't want to, you know go too late as you said it's decent prize money it's about now who's going to win the race they're going to get inside the world championship qualifying mark it's just a case now who's going to be your top three on the podium well coming to the bell james anybody's race 507 moving wide nibret lemlem into an attacking position 
And Bouchene all of a sudden is swallowed up by two athletes. She's in third at the moment, and she's done so much of the work through the second half of this race. But has she got the legs through this last 300? Yeah, it's going to be fascinating down the back straight. Keep an eye on the clock. So uh, an athlete wearing at 7.07. .07. I think uh, added uh, later to the finishing line, uh, finishing list there, Tim. Do, do you have them on your list? 7.07. .07. 7.06 is the lead. 7.06, yes, that's Medina Esa of Ethiopia. No times for her. She is a late addition. We got sent to our list literally a few minutes before we came on air. But it is Medina Esa, E-I-S-A, of Ethiopia. Well, put that name into your uh, Wikipedia of runners because Asia is coming down towards the finishing line. 7.06, she didn't have a lifetime best but she's absolutely smashed it on the track there. 1446.63, and it's, uh, well, you can see that's a fantastic time. Those times there should have been updated because that world lead is obviously from last night, the uh, 1405. Some big times behind, you can see they've beaten the wave like, so uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how many have gone inside that uh, 1457 uh, best uh, time that uh, will be a world qualifier. Ray Qual crossing the line there. Uh, Chalanga, the uh, Ugandan, a new lifetime best for her. But uh, Issa there, that's uh, 1446, Tim. That's a minute and 14 seconds faster than the uh, meet record set 12 months ago. This meet is going from strength to strength. Yeah, and I suspect that enough athletes will see this tonight and will want to come back next year and the times will move on a stage next year as well. It's been quite superb. 14.46.60, in fact, for Asa there and Chalanga, 14.50.93. Great running. And I think, what, James, I think it is so warm that it is actually not ideal conditions. It, uh, nobody wants to be running in 24, 25 degrees centigrade heat. Not when you're, it's early summer for the Europeans and they're not really accustomed to it. Maybe some of the East African athletes are used to it, but uh, it's still not conducive to optimal performance. Yeah, you can see, I think it's taking its toll on some athletes. I think for some, they train in fairly warmer conditions and climates. And uh, But for others, I think, yeah, 24 degrees maybe just took its toll. We saw athletes that uh, were coming off the pace much earlier than we thought they were going to, Tim. I, I expected a few more that would be knocking on the door towards the 15 minutes. There, there'd be a few slightly disappointed athletes out there, a few coaches and athletes that need to go back to the drawing board. But, uh, yeah, it was a fascinating to see a 14.46 time. So we were anticipating that uh, that time being around about the 14.45 to 14.40 mark. And, uh, yeah, to, to have a 14.46 new meet record, uh, it really takes the meet from strength to strength. Well, it improves Medisa, uh, uh, Medina Issa's personal best for 5,000 by some 13 seconds. Let me tell you, James, she was a late addition to the race. I wish we'd been told. World junior champion last year in Cali, Colombia, at 5,000 metres. She was second in the world junior cross country in Bathurst back in February. She is already a bit of a star, but she would be more of a star now after a win like that. Well, she's taken down some big names and... Uh, Clearly, there's more to come from her. I mean, you know, 18 years old? Boy, oh boy, what's she going to be doing in four or five years? There's just this production line of Ethiopians and Kenyans that uh, is, is uh, quite astonishing. And the rest of the world still reeling season after season as more names just appear. It does. The strength, the depth, and just the quality of runners. And yet, you know, when you go from being you know, a world junior champion and then stepping up again, I think it's... Uh, you know, great to see the strength and, and just it, it's the depth of the runners that we've had at the moment that are coming from Ethiopia that uh, are just so excited to see. Well, the men's 5,000 metres next. The men's A 5,000 metres will clear the show, but James, very impressive there. What, the first five under 15 minutes? Yeah, look at the times there, and uh, that's what we wanted. We had five athletes inside that World Championship qualifying time. Hannah Klein there, just outside the uh, the 15 minute mark, and uh, Bakatleti there, also just outside 15 minutes. So uh, Alana Ray there, back in uh, 14th place, and strong times. There you go, 17th place there, Tim. 15, 18, real strength and depth in that women's uh, 5,000 meter A race. Absolutely, anything. Close to 15 minutes is superb. The world has moved on, there's no doubt about that. Good job done by the pacemakers. They set it up wonderfully well. 
from that opening kilometer, 255. The second kilometer was what, 258. And they reached 3,000 in 851. And it was clear from that point that uh, the winning time was going to be a long way under 15 minutes. And the organisers, well, I'm so pleased for them, James, because there is so much work in pulling a race like this together, a meeting like this together, and they have been rewarded in one event after another. Oh, they have. I think, you know, there is so many moving parts, you know, the amount of people that are involved in this and the, the planning, you know, I know, again, speaking to Ben Pochi with the Knights of the 10,000s, that it starts literally the moment uh, they lock the doors from that meet, the, the, the organisation, what needs to be done, how they're going to make it bigger and better, uh, and the infrastructure and the people involved, and obviously there's loads of partners there. But I think you know the support of on running and, and the fact that they, you know, their mission is to get running out and, and make it, you know, something that it starts to change the culture and and bring it to a new audience. I think that's something that you know younger children seeing phenomenal runners on their doorstep, but also just seeing you know, the strength and depth of of you know the running groups that uh, that we we have on show today. And I think the times that we've seen not just over the 5,000 metres tonight, but over the mile, over the 1,500 metres, and we've still got that men's A 5,000 metres to come. Can we knock on the door 13 minutes? Well, she's a special talent, is Medina Asa. Remember that name, 18 years old, winning major races like this. She will be around for years and years yet, and no doubt world and perhaps Olympic medals coming her way. She's already a world junior champion, world under 20 champion, I should say, to get it exactly correct. But uh, you know what too, James, is, is, is really comes across, is there are natural races, naturally smart races, aren't there? These, the, the, a lot of these Ethiopians and Kenyans and Ugandans. I suppose it helps if you've got the ability, you just stay with the front pack and then accelerate in the latter stages. And it looks like you've run the perfectly judged race, but it's, it's easier said than done. And she ran a textbook classy race there tonight, kicking away really hard with about 250, 300 to run. Yeah, it was a mature run for someone that's still developing. I think, again, you know, I think we have seen someone that's going to be, uh, you know, very hard, you know, to beat in some much faster races. Um, I think, you know, she was biding her time. And I think that the speed, you know, to win a race like that and run away from a quality field that that, uh, that have been assembled tonight, you know, as I said, a young developing athlete, but, yeah, mature head on her shoulders, Tim. Absolutely. So the men's... 5,000 A race, the only remaining event at, uh, coming up. And it is of the very highest caliber, I can assure you. The target time, 12.55, 62 seconds per lap. Twenty-nine starters then in this final event of the fast five thousand evening. The uh, men's A five thousand meter race. It was due off fifteen minutes ago, but that matters not a jot. The uh, flexibility of this format is clear, and here are some of the best athletes that are out there. As I said, there are several who've run under thirteen minutes. Bahanu Belu is uh, perhaps one of the best-known names, the 27-year-old Bahraini, former Ethiopian, been uh, Bahraini since October 2014. Other names to look out for, Hosea Kiplanga. Well, he's a, a 13 13 man, but that was on the roads a couple of years ago, and his uh, track 5,000 is due a massive revision. He's only run 13-21, the Ugandan. There we are, Belu. He's uh, 29th on the list. In fact, 34 starters, according to this, which is a little worrying because I've got 29 on my, on my paperwork. <laughs> but uh, we'll get there somehow. James, your turn to find those missing runners. <laughs> yes, I, I do. I return the favour to him. Ian Crow Wright was one of those, the British athlete that uh, recently ran 13.28. I think it looks like he's got a, an upgrade into the A race, Tim. So I'll give you that one, uh, that one for free. But interesting, George Mills is in there as well. Recent World Championship uh, qualifying mark, 3.33. Coached by Thomas Dressinghacker, the uh, the coach of uh, OAC Europe. So uh, Robert Farkin also running that phenomenal 3.33 time as well. But uh, interesting, we're talking about uh, George Mills. How far will George Mills go, uh, being that he hasn't really got too much pedigree over even 3,000 metres, Tim? 
Well, no, that's right. I mean, if we can go four laps, something like that, it would be great. If we can go five laps, it would be superb. Set it up, George Mills, uh, as a pacemaker. Let's have a look at some of these athletes. 192. That is uh, Jan Schrub of France. He's a 13-11 performer. 188, Mahawi Mebratu of Eritrea. 1304 performer, Mebratu. 117, Salim Kedar of Algeria. Well, he's a 335, 1500-meter runner, making his debut is uh, Kedar, and he ran that 335 10 days ago in Montreuil. What can he do here? It could be something spectacular. 191, Kidanu to the right of picture. 13-14 performer, but so many of these East Africans are desperately keen to run fast, impress agents, impress sponsors, make some money to take home. 129, Bastian Augusto of France. He's a 13-38 performer. He's not down as a pacemaker, but he will be struggling to live with the front-end tempo for very long, I'd have thought, Augusto, unless he's in very special form. Looks like he's been uh, drawn the short straw at, some, at the moment, doesn't it, James? What's <laughs> he out there on his own for? Anybody going to join him? Yeah, James West there, one two zero. So uh, another uh, talented British athlete, and yeah, I think they're just again doing the organisation. So uh, just uh, making sure that everyone's in the right place to make sure that there's a safe start. As you said, Tim, the numbers have gone up. I think we have lost a few. There's a few uh, DNSs, but there's also been a few athletes added to this uh, men's A race. Well, we're looking for each kilometre to be covered in 2.35. That's 62 seconds per lap. Mighty fast. 4.09 pace for a mile, if you wanted that. There's Beilu to the right of picture. One, two, three. Alexis uh, Mie, 13.22 performer. Big fella, isn't he? Dominates. Head and shoulders almost literally above the athletes around him. But Beilu... Well, he's broken 13 minutes twice. He was sixth in the Olympic Games in uh, Tokyo back in 2021. Asian champion over 5,000 in 2019. He's a great racer. His 12.56 personal best came in the Rome Golden Gala meeting back in 2019. So a little while ago now. 135, that is another interloper, so to speak. New name that we've got to try and uh, identify. And we will do that as the race unfolds. Nervous moments, though, for these fellas. Yeah, one or two of them showing the nerves. It's almost the anticipation, Tim, isn't it, of the pain that they're going to uh, be putting themselves through. There's uh, a lot of laps, a lot of hard running, and obviously we're looking at uh, some pretty phenomenal times. As you said last week, we uh, had what was a world uh, record in terms of 13 athletes inside 13 minutes. We don't expect 13 athletes tonight to be inside 30 minutes, but we would love one to be inside that. But also we would love a few more to be inside that 13.07 world qualifying mark. And uh, yeah, there's a whole host of athletes that, that will be on their radar. So we're looking at, uh, you know, some fast running if you think 13, 20, 64, so it's way inside that. We're looking at 62 seconds, aren't we, Tim? 61 and 62 seconds for 12 and a half laps. So uh, for anyone that does run out there, that gives it some perspective of how tough and how hard it is for these athletes. And the paces, they've got a really important job. We hope they can get somewhere towards that kind of 745, 750 mark, Tim, for the first 3,000 metres. Yeah, anything around 7.50 would be great. In fact, that was the time they got to 3,000 in, in Florence last week, and that was a super fast race, as you just explained quite rightly, James. So 7.50, 7.52, even 7.55 would be great. So off 7.55, you can run uh, you can run under 13.10. And these fellas will, I'm sure. Eight minutes at 3,000, that is... A 13.20 pace. That is old hat now. Used to be good a long, long time ago. But uh, frankly, now, if you're not running under 13.10, you're almost literally not at the races. It is a, a different world. So you can look across there and try and pick out a 5,000-metre field. 
Well, you can just see a very well lit stadium. But they will get underway any second this field. And then hard, fast racing. Cooling a little bit in northwest Paris as uh, darkness descends on the arena. In a way, almost torture this, just being held up with a long <laughs> delay like this for the athletes. If you're out there, you just want to get it underway, don't you, Jones? You've been there in major championship finals. You just want to get running. Yeah, I think sometimes it's just, yeah, it's the anticipation, especially when it's already a few minutes later. And I think we saw that maybe in the women's race where they went out, that first lap was about 67 seconds. So it was a little bit faster than was actually needed. Um, and so, yeah, you almost don't want it to just be too much of a delay. There's so many nerves. You've done all your warm up a long, long time ago. You've even done your last few strides, what seems an age ago. And as I said, you know what's coming. You know this is going to be painful. Um, if for some this is going to make or break their season so yeah they just want to get on their way now so I think yeah, any more of a delay and uh, yeah the nerves just keep building and building but also the nerves of the pacemakers they know that they've got to get out they know they've got to control the pace and so yeah there's just a nervousness all round at the moment but uh, yeah conditions wise it's dropped another couple of degrees maybe that's what the uh, the, the timers and the, uh, the starters waiting for that temperatures to keep dropping there is almost no wind here now Tim so you can see the flags in the background are uh, literally still. And it's just a case now of our start team getting our I'm last really... race of what's been a superb day here in Paris. The, the Fast 5000 is now way established in that calendar. And uh, more and more people are going to flock here year on year. Almost ready for the start of the men's 5000 meter A race. He's not to be rushed, this gentleman, is he? The uh, starter. <laughs> I'm in charge, gentlemen. Step back from the line, please. Always mystifies me that people manage to get their toes on the line. Ah, uh -uh. S'il vous plaît, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ride it, Tim. You can't ride it. I think they, they're getting a little bit uh, twitchy now, aren't they? You can just tell. At last, the final race of Fast 5000 2023 in Paris is underway. Big field, 29 starters, or was it 35 at the last count? I've, I've lost count now, James, but it's a big <laughs> field anyway. One of the biggest I've ever seen in an elite track 5,000. Yeah, it's a big field. You can see the lights of the on tent there lighting up now, the green glow as they go through. So uh, the crowd here is still so strong. It's uh, 10 past uh, 10 in Paris, and I tell you what, they just wanted to get that A race on the way. They're on their way now, Tim. So we're looking up. We're around about uh, 61 to 62 seconds per lap will be optimum pace. Well, look at that. Hardly a breath of wind. All the flags hanging limp vertically downwards. And uh, it's like a Scandinavian night. It's like those beautiful nights when you could go up to Oslo or Stockholm or some of the smaller venues in Scandinavia and fi find conditions just absolutely spot on like this year after year. And these athletes hopefully will take full advantage of it tonight in Paris because they are moving well. We need to see 62 seconds per lap, ideally. And it might be close to that. We'll see as they come through 600. Of course, it should be 93, I think. How's your maths, James? Yeah, that's, that sounds about right to me, Tim. So uh, I think, yeah, the pace has done a good job thus far. That's such a hard thing, just settling down the early pace. And uh, yeah, around about, uh, around about 134, 133, but that's fine. Much better to be a little bit more controlled through that first 600 than see a 129, and that would end up blowing uh, everyone's legs out the water. So Pace is doing a great job so far. Well, I beg to differ. I mean, that was almost 64 seconds, that lap, 63.79 to 700 metres, so <laughs> to 600 metres, rather. So, so they, uh, they don't need any more 63 and a half, 64 second laps. This is coming through to 800 metres now, and that's better. That's about 206. I think he's actually picked it up the last couple hundred metres. 
Good job being well, done, as you say. 135, <laughs> though, who we were trying to identify is Jerry Motsau. He was meant to be in the B race of the 5,000. He's a, a 1322 performer, uh, but he has run 740 for 3,000. So maybe he's begged his way into this race and looking for a, a new personal best. Yeah, there's always a little bit of negotiations. Obviously, athletes have run times in the last couple of weeks that have moved them between races. And interesting, earlier, we talked about uh, George Mills and whether he might be pacing, but George Mills is tucked right in the middle of that group, uh, Tim. So unless he's pacing a middle group in there, George Mills is, is running a 5,000. So I'm fascinated to see 333 very recently over 1,500 metres and tonight going over 5,000 metres. And uh, he's tucked right in the middle of that group and uh, they're coming down towards having completed three laps. Well, the pacemaker is Valentin Gondouin, and he's doing a pretty good job stretching them along now. One, two, one. Back in third place is the Ugandan, Dan Gibet. He's a 13-16 performer. Did that just uh, about two weeks ago in Urdegem in uh, Belgium. He was fourth in the World Under-20 Cross Country, so we know he's in great shape. Fourth in Bathurst at the World Cross Country. African junior champion as well this year at 5,000 metres. So, Kibet in third place. We'll watch him. He wears 1-2-1. One, 109 moving down the outside. That is Rodrigue Quizera, who has only 13.20 on the track, but actually has run 13.11, can you believe, on the roads. And I was looking at his card earlier, Rodrigue Quizera, and it's uh, all his uh, very strong and in good shape. His first track race of 2023, this. Eighth in the World Cross Country. Now, to get in the top... 15-20 in the World Cross. You've got to be in superb shape. Finishing the top 10, you've got to be special. So watch him, 109 as well. Yeah, and no, I was looking out for him as well. Are you absolutely right? If you get top 10 at World Cross Country, you are some aerobic beast. And therefore, turning it into uh, 5,000 metres, you know, this could be a really special run for him tonight. So they've got way through the mile here. Looks like they're on schedule at the moment. Next lap, that will give us a two kilometre mark. And there's still a lot of running to go in this men's A race. Well, the crowd loving this one, roaring them on lap after lap. What a good job Gondouin is doing as pacemaker. 105 there on the outside is uh, Egide and Takarutimana, or Burundi, the 25-year-old. He's a 1308 performer. He was a fourth in the night of the 10,000s in London back on the 20th of May. What, what was that, three weeks ago in 2737? We know he's in good shape. In fact, he was a world championship finalist at 10,000 last year in Eugene, Oregon. There's a lot of good caliber athletes out there sorting themselves out, but because of the size of the field, they are so stretched out. And, you know, if you're not going to be up in the top six or eight, James, you can actually end up being 20, 30 meters behind the front end for much of the race, even though you're comfortable enough at the pace. So it's a, it's a difficult one. I mean, some people would say this field is too big at 29 starters. That's exceptionally large for a 10,000, for a 5,000. It is. Or was it's it 34 yeah. starters? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to say no. Um, as you said, the, the screenshot then of you know, front to back on that back straight, it was almost covering the 400 metres, but the pace that they're operating at, I mean, we are 5.14 through two kilometres, so we're maintaining the pace. Pacemaker's done a great job, you know, to, to get as far as he's done. It's almost a, a hard 3K from the front. I wonder whether we might get one more lap. Let's see what this lap spill is. It's 62.9 last lap. It's 63.9, Tim, so you're right. We, we Those uh, 63 highs or 64s, they're just not quite fast enough. So what you need now is somebody in the infield tell the pacemaker to get off the track because he's holding them back. They're chomping at the bit to get past him. I think, you know, there's a whole load of athletes breathing down his neck. That's a 64-second lap. That is 13.20 pace. That's nowhere near what was requested. 5.14 is a few seconds slower. We were looking for 5.10 at 2,000 to be on 12.55 tempo. And he's working hard. He's grimacing the pacemaker. And that's not what you need. You need a pacemaker in control, relaxed, and doing a good, steady job out in front. And he's actually holding them back a little bit now. Yeah, someone needs to take up this tendency now. I think they have now. Pacemaker has pulled aside. Still, look at that pack. That is a train of fast runners. So we need to now operate and get it back on that 62-second mark if we're going to pull back that 13 minutes and definitely that 30.07 mark. You can see the red marker there, the red lights. That is World Championship pace at the moment. So they're off what we thought the 13 minute pace, but we are chasing that 13.07 world qualifying time. 64.65 that lap, that's a shame. It has slowed dramatically these last couple of laps. And they're now operating at 
a tempo that's outside 1320, and the pack is bunching. There's a pack about 12 or 14, covered by, I don't know, eight or nine metres at the front end of this one, and it's not unfolding the way we had hoped. The women's 5,000 was a superbly fast race, one uh, with, what, the first five, was it, James, I think, getting the World Championship qualifying standard. But this race, look, four abreast down the back state, straight as uh, they come through seven laps. They'll get, when they go through the finish line next time, it'll be 3,000 metres. But it's not going to be that much inside eight minutes. No, the tempo's definitely dropped. I think this is going to be around about the 240 mark for that kilometre, which is still maybe going to be around about the, uh, the 755, maybe 757. So, yeah, it's going to need a good last two kilometres. They're going to need to pick it up. But expect how strong this field is at the moment that uh, someone has the speed to pick up that last kilometre. And there we go, 754, 79, and that was a 240 kilometre, Tim. Yeah, mid-race as soon as the pacemakers dropped out. In fact, it was before the pacemaker dropped out, the pace slackened. What a shame when you see the massive array of talent gathered tonight in this arena for these various races as one athlete drops, drops out. What a shame they couldn't find somebody to push on through the middle section of the race and take them through towards 3,000, perhaps closer to 750. Nonetheless, great race unfolding. As they push down the back straight, there has definitely been an acceleration over the last two or 300 metres. Gaps are appearing. That big pack that was about 12 or 14 strong, James, is uh, stretched out now, and we're down to little groups of three or four. Yeah, there's pockets appearing. The speed has definitely picked up. It'd be interesting to see what this lap speed is, because on this last lap, yeah, the aggression, the, the speed, you can see that the facial expressions have changed, and now five athletes team are pulling away. Let's see what this lap split makes with a mile to run. Yeah, 61, 80, much more like it. That was quick. I think maybe they would have got a yell or a scream or who knows, a kick up the backside from agents and coaches nearby saying, what are you playing at? 64 seconds plus for each lap is way, way outside. You can do that in training. This is a great race. Three away though. 61.8 is a vicious acceleration. The field, James, had almost been lulled into running 64 second laps for about three laps. Then the acceleration goes in. And uh, you've got this gap now. You've got this small pack now. In fact, I think it's a pack of five there with three behind. But uh, they would need to reach 4K. Well, if they were on anything like sub-13 tempo, it would have been 10.20. It's going to be slower than that as they go through the finish line with the, uh, through 4,000, though. 30 seconds to go. Yep, they're going to be way outside that. Still doing a great job is Antuka Ridmana. 18th in the World Championships last year. He's a 7.43 foul 5,000 guy. There's a 63.8, so a 61.8, followed by a 63.8. You know what I learned, James, and I couldn't do it, but when you're going to stick in hard, fast laps in the middle of a 5,000, I was told, and Brendan Foster told me this, too late, of course, he told me, he said, it's not the hard <laughs> lap you put in, it's the lap after that that matters. It's that it's anybody can throw in a 60 or 61, but if you wilt yourself, it defeats the object. It's the ability to put in a hard lap after the fast lap that is what crushes the opposition. And Ntuka Ritamana has not done that there. He's done a 61.8 and a 63.8, and he's lost a little bit of the sort of reward that he could have earned. Yeah, because I, I think his teammates gone past him, the other Burundian in there. So uh, remember, Vasti Nian Garbo, probably the famous uh, of uh, Burundian 5,000 metre world Olympic champion, wasn't he, in 1996? So Burundi won two in this group at the moment, but I think the lead is changing all the time. So they've gone through that uh, four kilometre mark, coming down now with 800 metres to run. You can see the clock there. Let's see what this lap is. Yeah, it's dropped again, Tim. 64.09 with two to run but I expect them to close in around about two minutes this last 800, so it is going to pick up, but we're not going to break 13 minutes tonight. Well, we need to worry less about the time and focus upon the great racing unfolding. Still doing a great job is an Takarutimana of Burundi. That is one of the great names for a commentator. I'm so glad he's not a sprinter. Uh, <laughs> but the rest of them are there breathing down his neck as well. 109, looking wonderfully relaxed. That is Quisera. I mentioned as a 13-11 guy on the roads, and he's in very, very good shape. He's a 61 and a half minute, a half marathon runner. He's got enormous strength. Has he got the speed? Because this has become, over this last mile or so, a tactical affair, hasn't it? 
It has Jan Schwab, the uh, French athlete, elite first of the French athletes, trying to close that gap. You can see him almost trying to suck that air in. You can see probably around about, what is that, 30, 40 meters, or maybe the uh, foreshortening of the camera distance, we're in 192. But he's got a 13, 11 lifetime best, so he's going to need a 60 last lap to get close to that. The race is on, Tim, into this last lap. It is certainly on. Pack of four with one athlete just two or three meters off the back of them. One, three, one at the front there, Mohamed Ismail looking strong. The Djibouti, and they've had a wonderful night already. The athletes from Djibouti, yet another East African nation rising to the fore of world middle distance running. Still holding that inside line is Quizera. Has he got the speed though? Now and took it is back in fifth place. He's the athlete ironic who did so much of the work in the second half of the race, but he's dropped back to fifth place as they come into the last 200 meters now. Around the bend for the final time. Don't worry about 13 minutes, that's gone. Clock bottom right of your screen tells you that. But 109, looking really strong is Quizera. 131 sneaking through on the inside is Ismail of Djiruti. And who is it coming through at the latter stages and taking it down the outside? Wow. It wasn't in Takarutimana, was it? Surely he couldn't come back. 183 there. Johan Jonas Rice of Switzerland. He's a 1307 performer indoors. He's run a long way under 13 minutes, under uh, 1320 rather. Oh, some quality running there. Yeah, Reese has run uh, 13.07 indoors, but that's a good... I know he's had a, a few injury issues, so the uh, Swiss athlete, a good return there. I think I saw George Mills inside 13.20. So that's a great bit of running. That's great range. And there was a whole host of fast times. Look at that winning time, 13.04, Tim. And I tell you what, wasn't just one athlete. Look at that shot. It was uh, four athletes well, almost in a line, Tim, going for go, going for the tape and the win. This is the shot. This is the shot we need as they cross the line, not the vertical shot. Now we can identify him. It's Levi Kibet, <laughs> 103, just 19 years old. This is his first track race of 2023. He was uh, a 1301 performer last year, did that at the Roman Golden Gala. Doesn't have great speed, ironically, my notes say. It's only run 345 for 3,000. He was uh, third in the world under 25,000 in Nairobi back in 2021. He was, I saw him at a 10K in Bangalore uh, three weeks ago in India. He was uh, 12th there, where it was steaming hot. But uh, Levi Kibet, fifth in Herzogenau Rack at a 10K race. In 27-14, back at the end of April, we know he's got enormous strength. But I'll tell you what, he proved there he's got fabulous speed as well. Superb. Yeah. Great finishing has. from the 19-year-old. He has and just a couple of seconds outside his lifetime best, but it was about the victory today and that strength. You saw the finishing times come up on the screen there. That was real depth. That is a quality meeting record by uh, Levi Cabet. That's another name to look out for over the next few weeks. And look at the highlights back now on that. It was a busy pack. Everyone stayed on their feet. Pacer did enough to get the uh, the race started. And then what a quality, a 2.31 last kilometre. It brought us back towards 13 minutes, brought us inside that 13.07 world qualifier mark. But uh, that meeting record now, that uh, puts this meeting, the fast 5,000 on the map. But uh, some times out there, I think it was George Beamish, and it was seventh place, the, uh, the New Zealander, and also a lifetime best for him, 13.14. So uh, part of that... Uh, that on you know that on team out uh, based in the US. He's also made a successful transition to the steeplechase. So we're uh, topping up a bit of endurance today over five kilometers. But Tim, what a quality finish there. Those uh, five athletes diving towards that line and a 13.03 winning time. But 19 years old, James, it is <laughs> daunting for the non-African nations to try and match this production line that just keeps spewing out amazing talents I'm going to be visiting uh, Addis Ababa myself in October for the first time ever in fact I think it's early November for the uh, great Ethiopian run and I've been told I can go for a jog if I want with some of the Ethiopians and their early morning runs up in the Ntoto and I've uh, I've not told them yet that <laughs> the very thought of getting on the bus with them at that time in the morning is more than I can handle. I don't mind about trying to go for a job with them. They are fantastically talented, so focused, and the focus of Levi Kibet there to cross the line in first place was superb. Perfectly judged, too. He never really showed himself, did he, until that last 100 did it when it mattered. Yeah, it was a quality finish. He, he showed his cards very, very late. 
And I tell you what, put the afterburners on. And there you can see the time there, 13, four, sorry, 13.04.21, the official time there. As well there, the 13.04 personal best. And look at that whole host of season's best personal best. And uh, yeah, that's a quality top nine there. And that really does, again, showcase the depth. And uh, that's even just the first page of the results. I, I'm sure the next page is going to be full of uh, PBs and season's best. So uh, it's going to be fascinating to see if that uh, percentage has gone up from 60% in 2001, 68% last year. Cavalry knocked on the door of 70% of lifetime best as more and more uh, of the circus acts will go on. People are going to be uh, partying. I think there's a DJ coming up on set shortly, Tim, as well. So people are going to be partying on into the night. And I'll tell you what, some of the runners, they're probably going to be joining them after their successful evening tonight. Just going back to that result, James. George Beamish of New Zealand, big personal best for him, 13-14-79 in eighth place. That's a, a personal best by over five seconds for the 26-year-old uh, Kiwi. Great running from him. And uh, Jonas Race of Switzerland, 13-13 in sixth. Jan Schrub of France, 13-14. Jose Kiplanga, 13-15. I mean, the, the times were great considering the uh, seesawing tempo of the race. Jose Kiplanga, by the way, very close to running a personal best. He's run 13-13, he ran 13-15 tonight. Uh, all in all, James, a really good tactical cat and mouse affair to close the show at uh, Fast 5000 2023. Yeah, 14 races, Tim, and finishing with obviously the fastest of the 14 races. And yeah, we've gone from a meet record that stood to Ellis Cross at 13.46. Now it stands at 13.04. Women's record's gone from 16 flat to 15.21. We've shattered records here. We've had a world lead in the women's mile. We've had a world qualifying standard, almost had a world lead in the men's 1500, 3.32 and uh, still some amazing performances that happened on the track and still some amazing performances happening off the track. But remember, this is just the third, the middle part of the uh, on-track nights. You know, it started in Mount Sack, you know, it went to uh, Parliament Hill with those amazing nights of the 10,000. In a week's time, it goes to Vienna. I can't wait to see what people throw down in Vienna. Beautiful city. People are going to run very fast there. There's going to be many that this was their kind of tune-up race for that as well. And then that, uh, that race, some of these athletes I, I would have thought would be heading, you know, especially with those Olympics in mind, Tim, thinking about trying to get you know, Olympic qualifying times for the 10,000. That Zatapet 10 in December, that will be one that a lot of people uh, put in their diaries. Performance of the night, James. Ironically, I suppose intrinsically against uh, other standards is by Narve Gillian Nordosh of Norway, isn't it? That 332, big personal best for him to win that A, 1500 meters for the men, but some supreme racing at 5000 as well that we've enjoyed. Yeah, Nordash was unbelievably, you know, phenomenal 332 in the fast 5000 meet but uh, again it showcases Nicky Hiltz you know, a world lead in the mile as well phenomenal performance and uh, yeah the first of our French finishers now just getting an interview wasn't quite a world standard but again you know he's still got a few more weeks to uh, to get towards that shrub because that was a quality run just outside his lifetime best but it definitely does set him up for fast running in the future Oh, another interview there from one of the uh, French athletes for the uh, spectators present in the arena who have enjoyed such a great evening of racing. In fact, almost a day of racing. They started uh, around midday, these races. The uh, A race of the 5,000, producing great times in depth. Did you say George Mills broke 13.20, James? I think I saw him coming over the line. I'll wait for the official result, but, uh, yeah, that would be a real bit of depth. You know, George is a very strong athlete, and, uh, yeah, I think, you know, that uh, him, if going sub 13.20, that uh, begs really good uh, even you know, strength for the future of how fast towards that 3.30 mark he can get. So, uh, yeah, impressive by Mr Mills tonight. Very impressive indeed. Well, James, it just remains for us to uh, wrap up, I suppose, after a great evening. Fast 5000 2023, as you say, it moves on now from one venue to the next. 
this uh, meeting will gain in strength and from year one year to the next it will gain in strength and I think the vast majority of uh, neutral viewers would say this format of track and field athletics is here to stay. Yes, it needs tweaking here and there, but it is so magical, so much character, so much uh, additional entertainment provided for everybody in and around the arena. It is quite superb, and uh, I'm all for it. And people say I'm old, old school. <laughs> no, I think, you know, what On Running are doing, you know, talking about transforming track culture and, and bringing, you know, running to a wider audience, I think that's exactly what they've done here tonight. They've made it fun. They've made it fast. The five... You know, the Fast 5000 is here to stay. And I tell you what, it's going to be on uh, every athlete's calendar in 12 months' time. So uh, I think that gives us time to uh, basically wrap it up here, Tim. So uh, for myself, James Thee, from Tim Hutchins, we hope you've enjoyed tonight's action. We've had some phenomenal performances, Tim, haven't we? And it's been an absolute pleasure being part of it. It has been superb, yes, James. From the Parc des Sports Montesson to the northwest of Paris onwards to uh, more great track meetings this summer and then those world championships in Budapest. James, I'll leave you with the last word. You're a 1500 meter runner. I know you will have loved that 1500 meters and Nikki Hiltz's performance in that women's mile was stunning too. She looked very, very much in control with that 4 foot 22 world best. We did, yeah. So from Nordis is at 3.32, Hilt's his world lead in the mile. Some super performances in for 5,000 metres. And again, we look forward to this meet going bigger and better from the uh, superb on-track night. This is uh, three of five. We hope everyone has super fast times in Vienna next week. So from myself, James Thee, from Tim Hutchins, good night. Thank you, team.